The original rights holders for Digimon have decided to market it as a child-friendly property. We, on the other hand, have not. Listener discretion is advised. Nope, 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 um, wrong track, sorry. Uh, let me try this again. Hey, what's up, superstars? Welcome back to the DigiCast, our retrospective Digimon podcast. I'm your resident goggle boy, Buggy. I'm Tom. I'm Matt. I'm Chris. And today we are finally talking about Digimon Tamers. It finally came, guys. Yay! Yay! Oh, long time coming. But before we do that, we must divulge into the news, and holy shit, has there been a lot of news. Oh god, we've been gone for a while. Yeah, yeah Digimon Try is getting the go. Yeah, boy. Yep. Uh, With most of the cast returning. A good amount of the original cast is coming back. I'd say like half the kids and uh, I haven't really got an estimate of how many Most of the Digimon. Most yeah. of the Digimon. I think the only exception was Beomon? Which I believe is being voiced by Jeremy Lay, who is a pretty well-known voice actress who does some really good work. Yeah. So I'm not worried about that one at all. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no. Uh, as for the kids, we got Josh Seth coming out of retirement. Fuck yeah! Yes. We got uh, Colleen O'Shaughnessy as Sora. We got Mimi's voice actress, and we got Izzy's. Um, um yeah. And then Matt, Joe, TK, and Kari unfortunately are not back. Although TK's voice actor is in <laughs> this still. He's voicing Nishikawa. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he couldn't do both. Or at the very least, play the character that he's already known to have played. <laughs> yeah, I don't imagine he's too much older than he was in um in in O two. No, I, Plus, I don't know. Maybe he inhaled a bunch of smoke between now and then. I, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but I'm I'm very content with this because remember, all I said was that I wanted them to put the effort in to get the original cast yeah. back. And they yeah, clearly they, did. They, they, they clearly yeah, did they, the they asked. So somebody, they asked Matt's VA. He was just apparently busy producing shows yeah. and including so, one that's coming. Yeah. So clearly somebody at Toei was listening to us. I would find it funny if that if that actually is the case. I, w- I would I would love it. Uh, so if they are, we thank you. So let's let's just get into the podcast. Yes. Um, uh, right. A uh, disclaimer from me before we go into this. Mm-hmm. Um, I was raised. Uh, I say raised. You weren't. I am prime. I am primarily familiar with the Japanese version because that was the first one I saw way back in the day. Right. Um. So I am probably going to be using names interchangeably. Okay. I. I Unlike the original two series, I am somewhat familiar with the the Japanese version. Like I know some of the major differences between the two. So I'm unlike the last two seasons, I'm not as useless when it comes to you know the the change yeah. between ja- original Japanese and the dub. I do have which a little bit me, of Tom, knowledge, not Tom, much, I but a little. Ask, uh, regarding yeah. this, have you in the meantime seen the Japanese version of Hurricane Touchdown? I still haven't found it yet. Now I've been listen. My schedule has in the last few months has been all over the place, so I haven't really had time. I was supposed to finish watching uh, Stranger Things this weekend, and I didn't do that. So that's just kind of where I am right now. I've got twenty thousand different things I'm going right only now. Only reason, but I do plan to get to it. Only reason I saw Stranger Things was that I came down with a fever, which ended up with me staying for a few extra days at home. So I just binged it one day. Yeah, I need to do that. Get Maybe sick. after this podcast is over. But anyway. So um, yeah, just just for reference for the fans who aren't familiar, Henry, Lee, 
Jian, uh, those two names get used interchangeably in the Japanese ones. Megalo Graumon, War Graumon, Ruki, Rika. Yeah. Bailzamon, Bailzamon. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry, Hirokazu, Kazu. Although, actually, Kazu's probably a lot easier. Um, trying to think what else. Dukemon, Gallantmon, Saint Gargamon, Mega Gargamon. They, they changed um, the Kato's last name for no, no reason I understand. Um, I know they changed the emphasis on Takato. Yeah, yeah but like, <laughs> uh, his last name in the original version is Matsuda, and I think in the dub it's Matsuki. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm looking at it right now, yeah. yeah it's the same with Ruki Rika. <laughs> Matsuda always, uh, always reminds me of Death Note. Matsuda was awesome in Death Note. <laughs> Yeah. He was the best. <laughs> um, um, the entire so the entire it, police squad was the best. But anyway, yeah. yes. Anyway, but so um, Tamers. This I guess is, yeah. The, this is the third season. Uh, the first season, not to include any of the original cast. This is a completely different world. Um, world based. Well, so they lead us to believe. But I'll get to that either at the end of this podcast or the next one. But. Um, yeah, it's three new kids with new partners, and the rules are very different from how they were, how, what we're yes, used the to. The rules are changed. The Digimon are real. The pronunciations are more consistent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, no, like, a lot of things, because, you know, the Tamers now use, like, they, they did a lot to incorporate the kind of the card game into the show. Because, you know, the, the tamers have to use the cards to, you know, grant new abilities yeah. or evolve or digivolve and stuff like that. Um, Which also, never really took off over here. No, never took off over here. I mean, I had the cards at one point, like, but I just never really guys, used them. The, the, um, card, the uh, cards is how, how we can tell that the uh, tamer world is heavily science fiction because a popular ki- kid's trading card game incorporates complex microchips that code, uh, that code a lot of data. Which is compatible across the card game, several video games, and actual Digimon. Well, there you go. Hmm. Um, Tamers. So, uh, Tamer, like Tamers, was was different not only in the rules and uh, and the world and whatnot. It was also hugely different in structure and tone. And I think that, like, yeah, and tone. And like, of all the Digimon series that they've come out with, um, I think that Tamers is probably easily the most unique of all of them um, and probably the one that holds up the most yeah, too. I, th- I, don't, yeah. I don't think it's too much of an exaggeration to say as far as how it was written how it was handled that tamers is probably the best of the series yeah i, I would go out of my way to say yeah that. i don't think it's too much of an exaggeration to at least put it up there i I mean, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for Atmon. Yeah, but, I have, um, but um, uh, a I, lot of I, I, uh, I'm having getting a similar vibe from Savers, but I didn't actually, you know, finish it. Oh, honey. Oh, wait, you mean Frontier? Oh, no, that, is that Frontier? Uh, no, Data Squad. Data Squad. Oh, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Um. Oh, honey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you About sweet that. summer child. Um. <laughs> um. <laughs> But Tamers, but, uh, ta- I yeah, think a anyway, lot of people, like, I, I think Tamers is also, but in addition to putting it up there, I think Tamers is one of those seasons that took a while for people to really appreciate. Because I, I know, at least from people that I knew when I was a kid, I think the big concern was because it wasn't Ty, it wasn't the original crew, it was this new group. And I think a lot of people kind of put off by that at first, but I think as the years have passed, people have really grown to appreciate it more. I've heard people... Yeah, yeah and so heard- a lot of kids were turned off because... You didn't really come bursting out of the gate with a lot of action for the first. No, for the first like several episodes. Yeah, no, it took like three or four episodes for like the first Digivolution even, and even and after the first Digivolution, it's like a, a giant gap between that and the next one. And uh, actually, yeah. I, I actually like that more because they they did a lot of neat things with the fi- cuts in the fights and like showed that made a point of showing that they don't need to evolve to win win fights and i found that yeah. a nice well, change yeah, of no, pace. I'm not, i am not saying that's a bad thing at all i'm just uh, which made the defeat for some of the some of the devas a little more embarrassing yeah um <laughs> <laughs> yeah i remember well, we'll i remember as a kid not really liking it that much just because it was different but when i rewatched it uh it definitely became the one that 
Yeah. Uh, I personally think is the most well written. I wouldn't necessarily say it's my favorite. I think I have too much of an attachment to adventure to uh, consider it my favorite, but I, I definitely think that from a objective uh, analytical perspective, Tamers is the best. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and I think a lot of that can be chalked up to the writing of uh, Chiaki Konaka, who yeah. is known for. Uh, Writing uh, Serial Experiments Lane. Yeah. Um, yeah. I believe. You, is it uh, you, Technolize? Was Technolize him? I want to um, say so, yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, uh, the Technolize. 13th episode of <laughs> O2. Yeah. Um, hi, uh, and I feel. Was was he Haibane, uh, Haibane Ron? Haibane Ron? I, I, Def- yeah, because that one looks way too much like Lane not to be him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you can- Razafan, he did uh, a lot for. But, um... You can actually see yeah. some of that Lane in, 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 in later episodes of, of Daymart. I think also what kind of added to it, and this is something I also didn't appreciate until I was older, was the, the characters themselves. Like, how they were written. Because, like, growing up, I, it always kind of, I had it in my head that Tamers had kind of some of the weaker character development of the show. Um, but it was actually watching Jesse Otaku's um, retrospective that he, is it he now? I think they, yeah, yeah, it's he now, okay. That he did back in the day of the Tamers characters. Um, and, like, he kind of really put it into perspective for me that they weren't, like, Ty and his group were meant to be, like, kind of portray the tropes. Of anime, whereas the kids and tamers are really just meant to be like kids. They're not like supposed to like be like wacky or gay. They're just supposed to be like actual kids growing up, which is why Takara. <laughs> Except for fucking Rio. Well, we'll get. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 Rio but, is, that's why, why is... Takara is the way. That's why Takara is the way he is. That's why Henry's the way he is. That's they're just they're they're just kids. And now that I know that, I definitely kind of appreciate it. I would I even go so far as to say tamers has probably some of the best character development of the series. And let's let's be yeah, honest. R- Riga kind of downgrades. Riga those. downgrades a bit, but I mean, by across the board, I'd say it's a little um it's it's they definitely handled it differently, but I would say probably better. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, t- um, honestly, Takata was one of the first um things um on, that was why i latched on immediately because as a kid i was a lot like Takata. i was a crybaby <laughs> and you designed um, <laughs> your own pitch i yeah i actually did make up some who did yeah. uh, the answer uh, is who did adamon uh, edgemon shivalimon paladin wait 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 edgemon, edgemon? he wielded swords <laughs> That was before Edge became a thing, okay? <laughs> that was back when I was 12. Chris confirmed 12-year-old Edgelord. <laughs> he wielded a sword! Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, uh, going back to, um, you know, the, the writer whose name I have already forgotten because I closed out of the tab. <laughs> uh, Chiaki something or other. Kanaka. Yeah, Chiaki Kanaka. Um, uh, I believe that he was told uh, that, like, his one stipulation for writing it was that he had to work the uh, the television show in, he had to work the video games in, and he had to work the card games in. He had to make it uh, more The television show, not so... Well, I mean, no, I mean the television so much, show like, exists, like, Zero One and Zero Two exist in this universe... In the dub universe. In the, oh, in the dub universe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think right. you can. I think you can make a guess that they somehow the ex, ex, somehow make the guess that ex, they exist even in the sub universe, just not mentioned because Takato in the later episodes makes an offhand uh, makes an offhand reference to Azulongmon, <laughs> which. Uh, implies he watched Zero Two. Uh, see. Yeah, potentially. But um, I don't know. It's it's really hazy in the uh, in the sub, from what I've heard. In the dub, it's definitely that universe. But anyway, um, like b- basically, he was told, "Hey, you need to make this uh, this series more merchandise driven." And what he did was he said, "You know what? I'll make it more merchandise driven. Yes, but I will make it in a way." 
that is better than any other merchandise driven show because fuck you that's how i roll i wrote lane <laughs> motherfuckers well he he definitely succeeded um why do i have a feeling that was the case with Yu-Gi-Oh arc five right now um <laughs> No, no, I don't know, uh, and I also don't care. I don't yeah, know. I, it's, I, but I do it's think... because like the car, so the cards are like incorporated in a way that you don't really question it. Like they don't feel shoehorned in; they feel like a natural part of this universe. And I love the, di- yeah. I love the digivices, by the way. I love the digivices. Oh, the digivices are so cool. Oh, in the DRs, yeah. yes, yeah, they're so cool in this version, yeah. Because uh, they they have like several different fu- like they really kind of uh, kind of explore the more the functions of the digivice in this one too. It feels yeah. like. Yeah, apparently like in the dub, it has a clock. Yeah, like I know, like I know Zero Two had like the, the the Zero Two also had the um what the fuck was that thing called the uh, D three the D three and also the the other thing oh, the yeah the D terminal the D terminal that's what it was called right I mean they they had that which was kind of cool but this one kind of really like it's almost like the the Poketch in uh, Diamond and Pearl Platinum oh okay I haven't seen mm. the later series of Pokemon so. Well, no, I'm talking about the game. I don't know what they do with the show. Oh, but like, oh, yeah. X and Y is amazing right now. X and Y is pretty. Oh, the, oh, the anime. Oh, yeah. No, I've been I've been watching bits of that. That looks really good. It looks like because black and white sucked. So this one looks like they kind of improved upon that. But anyway, um, so I've heard. Yeah, but anyway, but like, the, yeah, the Digivice is like you know, kind of like the Pokets from like Diamond Pearl Platinum. Those games, in that they have they have more than just like the basic function. Like they have a bunch of different functions added onto it. Yeah, they scan, um, they track, you can see through your Digimon's eyes. It's yeah, it's, it's just, something that's only used once. Um <laughs> but, it's, but it's still there. And the clock. Uh, and the clock. Yes. And the clock. But this And it has Metal Greymon's hand. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, but oh, anyway. fuck. I, I I should have saved that joke for uh, I should have saved that joke for Raulmon? Listen. For Takato creating, uh, creating Gilmon. Listen, we're gonna. I'm sure you'll find some way to add it in 20 more times. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but but speak. But basically, so, yeah. we should probably get into how it all begins. Not like the um, actual beginning, because that's oh, kind of revealed later. But like the show itself begins. Oh wait, first off, the well, opening. No, usually, oh, usually the opening. What we do is. What What about the opening? That is probably one of the first. When I the well the Japanese opening. Um. um Biggest Dreamer is probably the first opening that, one, got me to really appreciate anime openings. Oh, uh, yes. And two, oh my god, especially the second version, it is probably, it is a very, very good opening. It, I, yeah, but I mean, Biggest there, Dreamer made, made a point of, like, showing you there will be more stuff. And... I mean, it also sh- it also managed to just subtly depict the relations, the you know, the different relationships between the Tamers, their Digimon. It managed to include almost all of the villains in one shot. <laughs> hmm. the, uh, they, uh, that scene with Impmon Shiga, marching, Shiga. Beelzemon's behind him. And then the big you got but... the Hypnos buildings. Oh, yeah, yeah, it turns just... red, and you got the fog. I think the only one it didn't really represent was the Devas. And the uh, God, what? Well, that, what's there's the, what's there's, the, there's what's like twelve the of them. So called? I keep forgetting which which name. Zuchaman. You said the bird. Oh, Zuchaman, yeah. Yeah, Zuchaman. Which we're getting ahead of ourselves there. So right, yeah, but um, yeah, um, the, 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 let's, the let's actually. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was gonna say the dub opening is actually pretty cool, also. Like the, the the their version of the Digi theme from the dub, I, I is like pretty badass. This yeah. this whole season has a kind of the, the like it, it has a very Matrixy kind of feel. Matrix Digivolution. Oh well, Why yeah, there you go. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, there there is a kind of a very Matrixy feel to at least the first bit of this season. Uh, you know, with our. Are, are not antagonists, but they're not exactly good people. Um, Hypnos. Yeah. Uh, which is kind um, of the first example of just kind of like government kind of interacting with this, because we didn't really have that before. Well, and that, uh, before we that, get too too far into things, um, right. usually what we like to do is, uh, is start with the characters. And when I right. say usually what we like to do, I mean like... You would like We've to- done this literally once before. Twice, twice. 
Well, Adventure 1 and Adventure 2, and Zero 2. Yeah, Adventure well, 1 we just talked about more broadly, though. But, like, I Adventure guess. 2 we, we went through and sort of outlined all the characters. And I'd like to do the same thing here, too. Okay. Um, I, I want to start by saying that, like, uh, the way uh, advent- like Adventure handled characters was it, um, like, it, it sort of had... Each character had their own individual stories, and you got some really good emotional in-depth dives into... Uh, you know their their stories. Um, it was it, it was kind of like lost in that way. Some sometimes lost. Um, you have to go back to the island. <laughs> it had a except uh, had lost a came out after Tamers. <laughs> yeah. True. Oh, definitely it did. So um, who's ripping whereas, off? Who? You know, a- episode or uh, Adventure O Two uh, didn't do so well from that aspect, but I think it did a lot better with the relationships between the characters. Yeah. Um, here I feel like, uh, in in Tamers, it does both those things pretty well, but what it also brings to the table is, uh, that the Digimon themselves are actually fully fleshed out characters. Oh, yes. And that, um, they, they, like, the relationship between them and the Tamers as well. Yeah, no, they they, they get the personalities of the Digimon. (laughs) Well, it helps that they had a smaller cast. That's true. That's true, yeah. Well... They had a smaller core cast, but they had a pretty impressive, uh, like, extended cast. Well, by, oh, the yeah, end, man. By, by the end, they had seven or eight, which is, you know, about, about part of the core with Digidestin, but... Well, I mean, come on, Marine Angemon's only character was that he was kind of functionally retarded. Um, <laughs> but also a fucking Mega. Well, we'll do... So he's basically the just Jerry, The most Jerry, useless then. Mega. <laughs> So, so Marine Angemon's uh, character was basically just to be the Digimon version of Jerry. Then, oh, oh, uh, no. Uh, 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 no, uh, you do not speak <laughs> ill of Jerry. I'm sorry, you do not yeah, speak ill of I'm Jerry. Sorry. We'll get into that for. theory when we get to her. I will not <laughs> yeah, stand for we'll it. You hear me? That. Jerry let's, Kanjo uh, must be protected at all cost. Let's uh, let's start with uh, with Takato and uh, and Gilmon. Yes, yes Takato, Takato is our goggle boy this season, but he is. Very much unlike the rest of the Goggle Boys, he's uh, he's not hot headed in any way. He's very um, quiet. Yeah, he wears his quiet. heart on his sleeve. Yes, mm-hmm. and like um, he, he wears his heart on his sleeve, but he doesn't have very long sleeves. Still, for that. An intro- he, he's an introvert as opposed to the yeah. always very extroverted. Um, and and you I know, think goggle boys. And I think a lot of the audience could kind of relate to that, which is why I think is that it is good going in knowing that like, this is our protagonist. He's kind of just like us. So. Yeah, and he's also, I mean, despite technically being the leader, he's the least experienced of them all. Yeah. At least oh at the God! Start. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Because uh, like he's he's new to this, and so he sort of becomes the audience surrogate in that sense as well. Well. And like yeah. he's he, like he becomes the driving force, and he becomes the protagonist, and that sort of ends up qualifying him to be the leader. But like he he's just sort of this guy who's stumbling his way through, and uh, you see that a lot in his relationship with with Gilmon because he's not always the best tamer. No, a lot a lot of the early part of the season is just kind of learning how to you know manage. And also be how to train your Digimon. Try to train your Digimon exactly. Yeah. It, it's like all those. Sto- it's like all those cartoons about like you know steal- hiding a pet in your house and trying to figure out how to be a good pet owner. Yeah, you guys want to jump right to uh, to Gilmon right away then too. Uh, Gilmon is unique in that he was not really. He was created like Takato drew him, and the drawings got scanned, and thus Gilmon was created. Yeah, it's kind of weird how that mechanic works out, but I get, like, it is it's a mechanic the... that we see multiple times in Yeah, the no, because he does it again with his Digivolution form. Yeah, yeah well, like apparently the... the power of wishes is a big driving force for this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of. Kind of continuing off what Zero Two ended with. Uh, yes, only but good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there are repercussions to those wishes sometimes. Yeah. So, um, I, like, I, I, I love Gilmon. Gilmon like, is amazing. Yeah. He's so awesome. He's like a big, stupid puppy. And yeah, it, 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 his, his voice actor has, has 
I would say, experience with that. Oh yeah, fucking Goku. Yes! Yes, <laughs> goddammit! <laughs> Wait, no, oh. but yeah, the voice actor is uh, Steve Bloom. No, 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 because the voice uh, actress no. for Gilmo in the in Japanese, the Japanese version, version it's Goku. is Masako oh. Nozawa, who voiced Goku, Gohan, and Goten in, in Dragon Ball. Jesus. Yeah, but in, in the dub, it's Steve Bloom, which is like... Equally awesome. Equally awesome, because <laughs> Steve Bloom is like fucking amazing. <laughs> And, uh, and and his dub voice too is so good. It's one of, uh, it's one of the most fun things to. Takato man. 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 I love I love making that voice. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's adorable because this really it, Gimon's whole thing is is he's growing up as well. Like he literally just hatched, and he, you see throughout this uh, the season, he go from this this, this baby mentality to like being almost. Adult like almost. Almost. He's su- he's such a dumb baby puppy though, and that what mi- that's what makes him so endearing. I love yeah. him so much. Yeah, no, Giamon's so awesome. Giamon's great. Giamon's the best. Giamon. And and then I think uh, technically Rika and Renamon are the next ones we meet, but I think I want to go with uh, with Henry and Terriermon first. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. yeah, I think Henry. I think going in order it would be Henry and Terriermon. Henry is. The older brother figure. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I but, mean... Uh, but it's an interesting dynamic because unlike the past seasons when you had, you know, Ty and Matt or, you know, Davis and TK, Takano and Henry have a very, you know, friendly, cordial relationship. Like, there's no... there's. I mean, they, they may argue once or twice later on, but it's not, like, a very hostile relationship. It's more like, you know, mentor and pupil almost. And... Uh, and, I, uh, well, and, a lot of the clashes is with the fact that he is a very staunch pacifist. Oh, uh, yeah. With, yeah. Absolutely. With, and, but, with, uh, but I just wanted to point out the fact that it's just, you know, to go from the first two scenes to this now to have, you know, the two leading males, like, not, you know, competing all the time, I think was a really kind of like, it, it was a nice way to just kind of slow it down and kind of just, like get us used to these characters. And also just kind of see, you know, getting new a new friend, basically. Yeah, but I think why uh, why why that came about is because we have a smaller core cast so with like with two main main male male characters go going at it going at it uh, all the time we'd have just one one character to you know react to that and we would have much of an interesting dynamic for this hey, fair enough yeah and mm-hmm. I've always gotten like from from Lee, I've gotten always the the the, the vibe that he's uh, he's like a grown up Cody. Henry, huh. yeah, no, that's that's it's not inaccurate to say. I don't think. Yeah, that's. I do like how he a became a pacifist. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I learned karate. I was showing off. Clocked a kid. <laughs> yeah, that, that's. <laughs> That is oh, that's actually I don't really remember that. No, that's think, brought up that... later in the show. Okay. Is it okay. is it in the is it in the dub? Because I, I think I missed it in the dub, but I know it's in the Japanese version that they bring that up. Yeah, again, mm-hmm. I haven't gotten to the second half of the dub yet. So yeah, I yeah. The, se- the first half I know really well. The second half I'm a little fuzzier on like the intricacies. Like I know obviously the big things that happen, but uh, just a couple of little things. But yeah, no, that's a that's a thing uh, I know is at least in the Japanese version is that he learned he was I think he was bullied as a kid. And he learned uh, kind of stuff, and then he kind of just beat the shit out of this guy, and that's kind of what brought about. He was horrified by what he did, and so now he's basically just staunch pacifist. Yeah, I, I was gonna say like when we started on Henry that he feels the blandest and most milk toast of like everyone, but no, thinking back on it now, it's like he is actually kind of the most uh, the most interesting and the most dynamic. It's just in. Especially really with his family, ways. yeah. yeah well, because, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. He was boring, but he had he had legitimate reasons for why he was the way he was. Yeah, I mean, like you, you've got Takata, who has a very clear story arc of I want to become a better tamer. I'm, you know, I want to become a better leader. I want to grow as a person or whatnot. Uh, you've got, you know, Rika, who has this whole mommy issue. I need to <laughs> mommy issues. She has to deal with you know learning how to, uh, you know, make these friendships. And not be an asshole. She sort of shut herself off from (laughs) from everyone. And, like, those are pretty clear and easy character arcs to follow, whereas Henry is a little different. He's, you know, this very conflicted guy who is forced into a situation that he doesn't necessarily want to be in. 
yeah. um, even though he's Which is... really good, he, he's really well equipped to be in a fight. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that actually in some ways makes him the most interesting. It's just that on, on a surface level in terms of, of personality and whatnot, he comes across as a little blander. But yeah, I'd, I'd say that comparing him to Cody in that sense is very fair. Yeah. And, is that, is that uh, a <laughs> bit of uh, in depth uh, also, it, it may come from that when I first saw Tamers, I again saw it uh, in, on, in German, the German version. And they uh, had. We're gonna we're gonna have some fun things to say when we get to Renamon then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will. But the point I was going to make is that uh, Cody and and Lee had the same voice actor in the German versions. Oh, huh? Wait, in the oh, in the which version? German. Oh yeah, c- yeah, because Renamon is voiced by a dude in the German version, isn't he? Which makes a lot of scenes really awkward later on. <laughs> Yeah, but we'll, we'll we'll get to that. But yeah, yeah. I, I also want to get to like the the voice cast and characters being or voice actors being reused again in a little bit too. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, do we do we have more to say on Henry, or can we get we, into Terry or Mom? Henry, well, Henry, I think Harry the big thing you need to remember about he, the mo- thing you need to remember Henry going forward is like yeah, he's kind of bland, but he has legitimate reasons for it, and he has very core set of beliefs. That he try that he abides to, and those ca- often kind of clash with what the situation he's dealing yeah, with. Yeah, but I would uh, at the time I would disagree with calling him bland. He's he's like he's withdrawn, but he's very. No, I, I say he seems bland. I'm not saying he is himself bland. He seems bland. Yeah, but he's very. He's a. He's very. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe well, I, I think I think it's better to say that he is. Uh, <clears throat> he's unassuming. Yes. He's uh, because he, he he's not very. Yeah. He he's a. He's a withdrawn type of person, and um, he doesn't come across as having a lot of personality, right? Uh, especially when compared to a lot of characters in Shonen. Right. Although later in the series is shown, he is fiercely protective of his sibling. Oh so. yeah, he is. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, but um, so, do you have something to say there, Maddie? Oh. Yeah, no, no. I think we've we've got. Let's 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 go to the. Okay. Let's go to the poor molested terrier mom. Uh, wait, 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 I love sorry, terrier what did, mom, ju- so. what did you just say about him? <gasps> that he's being did you say abused. molested? He's being abused by a little girl. Oh, okay. Oh, Susie Jeez. the fucking terror. Jesus Christ, <laughs> not, dude. Not all molestation is sexual, Tom. I know, but it was just like, that was just really kind of, what the fuck? <laughs> um, but yes, um, this terrier mom is actually... Slightly different from the Terrier Mon we see in Hurricane Touchdown. Uh, <laughs> this Terrier Mon's a little shit. No, this Barry, Terrier let's be honest here. No, this Terrier not. Mon is a breed of Terrier Mon uh, known as Zero Chill Terrier Mon. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is supposed to be Zero Chill Terrier Mon, or or the one from Hurricane oh, Touchdown. No, yeah. th- this is Zero Chill Terrier. He mon. has all the chill. Oh man, I. No, no, no. If he had but, zero but, but, like, chill, he, said, he would have himself been... is chill. To so everyone he else, he has chill. no chill. Moment <laughs> If you can't even keep track of your Digimon, you must not be a very good tamer. <laughs> Moment <laughs> Yeah, he'll... He has, then he'll just get always, used to like, hearing that word what, what every he'll 50 do, seconds in this what, fucking... What he'll do is, is, is he will, like, say something offensive or rude or whatnot... And then he'll get called out for it, and he'll just be like, "But Henry, moment <laughs> as if that gives him a license to be a little shit. <laughs> oh, Terrymon, Terrymon! Oh my god, he has all the that... chill, dude. All the chill. No, he has zero chill. He just does not give a fuck. He doesn't give a flying fuck. <laughs> I think that qualifies as rude. <laughs> I mean, Terrymon's such a quotable character too. It's awesome. He's so great. He's I, I think that he's my favorite character of the uh, of Tamers so you know, far. At least. I think I think well I think as the series progressed, I think he kind of got on me a little bit because it's like Terrymon, not not the fucking time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but no Terrymon. I think I think this show needed Terrymon to keep from being too serious. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because there were there are a lot of moments throughout, like beginning to end, where the show kind of toes that line between being you know lighthearted, fun, and and being like fucking like I lost the comparison I was going for, but being way too serious than it probably should have been that early on. I would have almost yeah. I would almost agree with favorite character. I mean, I'm not saying he's not yours, but. For me, he's a second to a particular asshole I love. But we'll get Which to that. Which one? Okay. Um, I just appreciate how fucking trigger happy he is. He <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, oh, dear. No, Gargamon is awesome. just like, ah, I have guns for hands. <laughs> I, my hands are giant fucking machine guns. Deadshot ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> so... So I don't I, I don't like going back to uh, to Lost in Translation Mon too much because I mean we're we're our own podcast and whatnot. But one thing that they posit is that, um, like H- Henry says something about like you know he changes so much whenever he digivolves into Gargamon. They posit no, he doesn't really change at all. He's just like that. He's just given like machine guns on his hand and given yeah. the ability to be more destructive. He's always just this psychopathic funny man child who yeah pretty <laughs> much will shoot, would, would be shooting up everything at all times if he had guns on his hand yeah and then he get, and then they get a rocket launcher yes. <laughs> uh, and, and he's like him, and then they give him like giant new uh, well we'll get to that we'll get to that but, in the next episode i think yeah, yeah. no like yeah, no, Terrymon is just a, a trigger-happy little puppy dog who don't give a fuck about nobody. <laughs> about nobody's feelings, anyway. Uh, um, do we want to move on to uh, to Rika and Renamon, then? Ah, uh, Rika. Yes. Rika, I had such a massive crush on this girl when I was a kid. You too. Oh, could, could you not? Could you not help it? I mean, come on. Yeah, dude. Badass, um, badass chick kicking ass all the time. Please. Oh, Jerry, Jerry was my gal. I like Jerry's. I mean, I adore Jerry, but like. Well, yeah, but yeah, that's but, because but, both of you are autistic, so you could identify with her. That. I, I, I was getting no, to do that. me, motherfucker. <laughs> do time, Andy. Do yeah. no, 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 guys, time. guys. Jerry, Jerry is the proof that the guys who made Everyman Hybrid watched Digimon Tamers because. That's basically Alex, Jeff's brother, within the series. Hmm. Oh. Oh, yeah, I never made that connection. I should talk to Jeff about that. I'll have to, uh, I'll, I'll have to that was the f- be looking for that when I, when I rewatch, uh, Every Man High When, I, when I was doing so the Tamers rewatch, oh, out- oh, don't worry, Andy, they've only released, like, two videos in the last, like, year and a half, so... <laughs> Jeff, they're not, Jeff, they're no, not really Jeff's missing much. Dead. Spoiler alert. Uh, hashtag Jeff's yeah, dead. <laughs> but yeah, hashtag when, when Julie first pulls out the sock puppet, I'm like, is she being Alex now? <laughs> yeah. No, actually, that's a good point. I've never really made that comparison before. But yeah. <laughs> um, but Rika, it's... Because Can you, you know, tell we... that we're all from the Slenderman myth? <laughs> yeah, boy. Um, but Rika, it's like, we had Sora, who was, you know, the crest of love, you know, compassionate, caring. We had Mimi, who was sincerity, you know, always kind of spoke her mind, but still very girly girl. We had Yoli, who was, you know, a bit the more best. abrasive. Yoli really was awesome. Was more <laughs> abrasive, but still kind of, you know, held back. And, and we, we had Kari, who was Jesus. <laughs> we have Jesus Kari. Jesus Kari, as I said in the last, in the last episode. As, that, sh- that still should be a thing people should say. Jesus Kari! Uh, but, and, and now we have, we have Rika, who's Rika, the frigid bitch. Rika, who will kick your fucking door down. I would like to point... Kill everybody at the dinner table, and then eat the leftover food just for good measure. I would like to point out that you're kind of a worth of the act and that she was just basically mad. Um, yeah, she she is like well, no, she like she is the Matt archetype. I guess so. Although Matt, I don't think Matt was as brutal as this girl could be, though. No. Like Rika, yeah. Like, but, like, but like Matt wasn't bloodthirsty. <laughs> <laughs> when when you really start to you know look at her her backstory and. Yeah, you know, no. just how she was raised, uh, how she interacts with the world. Um, that's her uh, dad wanted a boy. <laughs> oh, is that well, is I, that something that? Well, the show doesn't the, really get into her dad all that much. I think that's that one is of, the one line in the actual series that's brought up about her dad. 
Yeah, oh, wow. I mean, I think he, he, I think he shows up later in the movies. I, but. I was, uh, that movie, uh, Chiaki said that's non-canon. Oh, okay. since he didn't write it. Oh, well, he didn't write the fifth one either, but that one's a kind of canon. Yeah. So, eh. uh, but like you, you can kind of understand why, uh, why Rika is. You know, is as icy as she is and, in some ways. And she tones down the blood first when she comes to terms with the fact that Digimon aren't just, you know, playthings that spawn into the yeah. real world. And they're actual, you know, living beings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, I think the thing with Rika is she feels like she has uh, something to prove. And I think that, uh, you know, her being a uh, female does add... Uh, add something to that uh, from that sense because well, also she's somebody who's not easily satisfied i mean she's the yeah. queen of the card game but like she's still uh, that's not enough well yeah that's because well, i think i think the reason she ranks second and not first <laughs> well we'll get to that we'll, we'll get to uh, that fucking rio <laughs> fucking rio <laughs> Welcome to the DigiCast. Take a drink every time we say we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Do, do you want to give um, them alcohol for them? I, I think the thing with, with Rika, too, is that she is... I wouldn't say that she's withdrawn, necessarily, I, but I would say that she is She alone. cuts the world off. She yeah. sort of isolated herself. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that's just definitely... Because, I mean, like, you've got that whole it's lonely at the top thing going on, and like she doesn't really have anyone that she can <coughs> connect yeah. with. Yeah, except so. we never really. She could try connecting well, with her awesome grandma. Well, it's a it's a weird thing because you know with Takata we meet his group of friends. Even Henry, we kind of get an idea of his group of friends. Rika, we never see her interact with anyone outside of you know the the, the, the core Digicast. So mm-hmm. if from that we need to imply that she's kind of always been on her own. And like. We uh, we described uh, Takato as introverted as opposed to like all the other tamers, but or all the other like goggle boys. But I think he's actually the most extroverted of the cast. And he's yeah. of, if, of the cast that we have here. Yeah, pretty um, much. I wouldn't because he'll still go out of his way to talk to somebody. Yeah, but I don't. I don't really think he's uh, he's uh, he's introverted as much. He's just not as on fire as the previous uh, as the previous protagonists. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, Definitely. But um, but it, it but if R- Rika is, is really only made better through her partner, and Rika and Renamon, oh yeah. maybe one of the best partners ever made in Digimon. Yeah. I think that, uh, at least in this first part, um, yeah. at least in this first part, I think that Rika is the character who gets the most development well, yeah. out of with her part with, yeah. with through her partner yeah, yeah. yeah. For, and through that for like, the first few episodes she's kind of the villain in a way kind of yeah well, kind may, of? maybe not as much a villain but as but an antagonist she's always there to, uh, like for the first two or three appearances she's just she's antagonistic without being an antagonist she, no no yeah. but the, the for, whole... for the first few for her first few appearances she's just like you, me, let's fight now. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. She holds the, that the whole... firm belief that Digimon are nothing but data. Yeah. Which is, which I mean, you know, we we saw that with Ken, so that's not uh, that's not a new philosophy. Yeah. yeah. And Tamer, Tamers is really interesting in how it uh, it handles its antagonists and villains as well. Mm. But uh, again, we'll get to that. that. To that. <laughs> Taking a drink. <laughs> um. Yeah, let's uh let's talk about Renamon now. Ren- Renamon, uh, Renamon, Renamon is badass, and like I think it's the only Digimon that uh, Renamon is the only Digimon that ever mastered Shun Pushes. Renamon is Renamon is nowhere to be seen. Renamon, I need you here. That Renamon is probably. She I is the she, tallest rookie in the franchise. The tallest rookie. But I think she's also, can be, so far as we've seen, I think she's also the one with the most depth to her. Yeah, Cause she ha- definitely. Because she has this backstory where she's a renowned warrior in the digital world. And she's also looking for somebody who can bring out the, the strength in her. Which yeah, is why I she, mean, uh, She's like, very uh, progress-driven. Yeah. Gilman is is a big, dumb puppy, and I love him. 
Terry, your mother is an is asshole puppy. Hilarious and zero chill and, and an asshole, and I absolutely adore him. Renamon, now, let me be upfront about this. I am not in any sort of way a, a furry or anything. I, 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 you, I, you are going kind, to make that disclaimer, oh, no. it's false. You I kind of sort of want her to step on me just a little oh, bit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so you are a furry. I'm sure Renamon made so many young boys very sexually confused. Oh, I know they did. Um, not me. <laughs> not me, because, you know, I never really saw an appeal in animals. Uh, um, okay, no. Apropos, Lu Lucar Apropos. Lucario is the god of the furries, Renamon is, is the by queen. far the god. Okay, but, I would like to no, I would I was, like I to always way, bring I was, up I was, a I was story. way more into her partner than I was into Renamon herself. Okay. <laughs> the point here, uh, the, the, what I want to say is back when I was like 14, uh, yeah. I was uh, I was active on a Polish Digimon fan site. Uh -huh. And uh, I've met a bunch of people there. Who I, uh, who I haven't seen for, for umpteen years, but I've heard from other friends about them, and apparently several of them are currently active in the furry fandom, which I should have seen coming from all the Frenamon porn they made. <laughs> so, so if I go into Google Images right now, I'll probably find something of theirs. Mm, do you know? <laughs> you'd have to look for Polish artists. It's the internet. No, I, I, I didn't know anybody who was in the Renamon as a kid because I didn't really know anybody else who watched Digimon at that point in time when I was a kid. Yeah. By that point, I was pretty much Same. the only one I knew who watched Digimon, and I didn't frequent the internet that much, or at least I didn't go into that part of the internet. Until I was in high school. Actually, no, I was I was in college by the time I really kind of got into my first chat room. So I was a very sheltered boy growing up. I liked the inter I liked the internet when I was fourteen. You could talk to people and not get hit in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like the 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 thing with Renamon is like I'm I'm not really sexually attracted to her or anything. Uh -huh. you, you know, every, like, all of those, I, I can, all of those I can kind of see just why. Digging you deeper. <laughs> I can kind of see why people are because one, her voice is like in in the dub at least is quite sexy. Um, and the lines she uses pretty much seem to be like uh, that. Pretty much every line seems to be some variation of. Hey, young boys, why don't you come over to the furry side? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, she... When, when sending her into battle, like, Rika's catchphrase for her is basically, Renamon, walk all over him. <laughs> yeah. Is... Like, the, the dub writers at the very least knew what they were doing with this. They actively promoted this. <laughs> yep, we have no one to blame but them. Which is um, why it's so hilarious that in German she's a dude. Yeah, <laughs> and I, this is one of the funniest changes. I would like to point out two things about that because I'm, uh, you see, because I watched the German dub first, and I was like, yeah, why, why, why is Renamon speaking with a male voice? Uh, but the voice first, the voice kind of worked. Renamon, yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean, in the German version, the dude voice, actually. Oh, did? The, 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 the guy voicing Renamon did a very good job. And okay. didn't. Uh, the, the, only, the only moment. They, they just switched the actors when it came to the, well, explicitly female mega form. Uh. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but one big note about Renamon. Uh, can I. Is may that... I? Because I. I oh, oh, sorry, yeah. I was going. Two. Because uh, actually, I have three things. But two is in the Japanese version, they picked an actress who, who either has a very deep voice or she can perform a very deep voice. So yeah, the Japanese Renamond has just this really, really deep and booming voice. I mean, it's a female voice, but it's still really, really deep and booming, as as far as that can go. And within the series itself, when asked. About her uh, her gender by Rika's mom, Renamon 
out will explicitly states that Digimon don't have genders at all. Although I beg to differ with Bobamon, but well, again, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I'm like, I, I, I don't care. I'm okay with this, especially since Taomon uh, looks male. Yeah, Talmon's pretty androgynous. Yeah. It, it was progressive ahead of its time. Um. But a, a big thing about Renamon is that compassion is a very foreign thing to her. Yeah, but I think she picks on it quicker, picks up on it quicker than Rika does. Yeah. I mean, she's taken aback by giving being given an energy drink, talks about friendship, all that sort of thing. Yeah, but she Rika, like after like episode like three or four, I think it it comes in. She's just like, "What is this friendship thing? Is that is that what I have? Are we friends?" Fanfic writers, oh, you're more than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, he's not oh, wrong. Oh, he's... now I have an image in my mind. Why would you do this to me, Chris? Oh, oh, come okay, on. oh back come in on. my hentai viewing days, there was so much Rika Rena hentai. I didn't look uh, for it, but I know it's out there. <laughs> I am 100% positive it is. Oh, no, it is. I, I'm pretty sure Jesse Taku showed a few of them off in his retrospective. I'm uh, oh dear, like <laughs> I'm not. I I'm not that. I, this is weird. I'm not that appalled by Renamon hentai, but Rika's like what thirteen? Yeah, uh, you, depends on which version you're watching. I think in the dub they're they're like twelve, thirteen. I think they're the, yeah. they're, I think they're the oldest in the series thus far. And I, I, okay, hold on, let me double check. I'm, okay, yeah, in the dub, she's 13. In the original version, she's 10. Jesus! <laughs> Holy shitting <laughs> fuck! Jesus! <laughs> okay, look, look. The, the whole furry thing is kind of weird to me, but if you're into that, whatever. I. <laughs> Even go, more good, good on you, whatever. There's this program Yuri, being, okay, being two. rookie dress up. <laughs> stop stop i Two, can't take it yuri whatever i've been known to enjoy yuri on occasion i'm not huge on it like yeah. a lot of people are but whatever and let's I, let's, I let's, I I it, let's it, not pretend show, like, like you don't post post my on those. like like lolicon that's a huge subject i don't even want to touch here but i don't even know like, what that is whatever it's, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna be like, nah, it's terrible and awful. But I mean, like, if you're combining Yuri furry fandom and, and Lolicon all at once, that, like, yeah, don't, don't do that. Oh, I'm kink shaming you. If you like that, I am kink shaming you. God, what is wrong with you, you sick fuck? <laughs> I need to I need to get this clip and just like put it like on my on my text uh, on my text message. <laughs> I'm king shaming you. What is wrong with you? You sick fucks made the set by Andy. <laughs> um, but yeah, like uh, you you say Renamon's got a deep voice in Japanese and and in German as well. Um, in, in German, it's just to do. Well, and while an English her voice isn't necessarily um, deep, it's definitely a mature female voice. Yeah, uh, it's it's much lower in tone than a lot of female voices. Uh, so, kind of in the English as well, uh, we've got that going on. But let's talk I, about. I feel like she is the oldest because she has the most vivid memories of the digital world compared to yeah. Terriermon. Well, obviously not Gilmon, and compared to Terriermon. Yes, please. Let's, let's continue talking about Renamon in a in a sense that doesn't involve anything sexual. Let's Chris, yeah, what, yeah, no, Chris, not, one thing you said that. just made me think that the uh, lineup consisting of just Renamon and Gatumon would be hilarious because then you get ask someone which one is the higher level. Hmm. <laughs> and I, I think I think that the the whole evolution line thing too chris is bringing up a good point it's a lot different in here than it is in the like the other series because they're like 
in Japanese, they're they're named like baby, child, adult, um, mm-hmm. etc. Uh, which Perfect. you can kind of see reflected in their mental states uh, and and their voice lines. Because like you've got uh, you've got Gadamon, who's an adult uh, compared to all the other you know child Digimon, and she is has a more mature voice. She acts more mature than them it's it's um, definitely noticeable in uh in the new in uh the try like episode one of try yeah like especially when you're listening in japanese yeah exactly uh, so where where in the first thing it's kind of like they actually aged up and become more intelligent and such as they get older um here uh digivolution is basically just an upgrade in power yeah. yeah. Well, you've got you've got, you know, Renamon who acts very mature and is, you know, functionally like an an adult. Uh and then you've got Gilmon who's like a a baby. Uh and cuz like again, the big dumb puppy. And then you and have Carriermon who who's... just does not give a fuck and gets gun hands. Yeah, he's he's like the annoying older brother, I guess. To what, you see, it's even weird to call him an older brother because he's so damn small. But and that's the exactly dotable. what he is. No, no, no. I I know what he is. Like he's <laughs> he's he's the tiny shrimpy kid in the class who just can't keep his mouth shut and who has to get really good at running away or making sure people don't quite catch his quips because otherwise the big jocks are going to beat him up. And I know he that does because... get his ass kicked quite a bit. <laughs> oh yeah, he does. I mean, like that—that's that—that's me. He's like the little scrappy, quick-witted, uh, like kid. He, he, he'll just tell you to fight him all the time. He—he's too dumb to keep his mouth shut. Yeah. So, but yeah, like Renamon, it's hard to talk about Renamon as a character without uh, talking about her relationship with Rico, which is a very interesting dynamic because. Like I said, probably one of the deepest in the series. Yeah, they they both see each other as as tools. They see you know each other as superior to uh, the other. Like Rika's perspective is, well, I'm using Renamon to fight, and I'm the one who's doing all the work. I'm taming her. I'm you know putting in the effort. Um, yeah. You know, whereas Renamon's thinking, I am doing all the work in the fighting. And I'm using, you know, Rika as a tool to become strong. power me up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and although it's, it's a very interesting dynamic, they both have to learn a little bit of humility uh, and see each other as equals and partners rather than tools or lesser things. Yeah. Um, it's. It's God. It, it's probably oh God. I don't even know what else to say about it. It's a. It's a very. I don't know if I want to say it's an adult relationship almost, but oh God, even saying that, it's I kind just realized. Of... God damn it. That's not God what I was damn going it! For. We're back to where we were <laughs> not too long ago. <laughs> that wasn't what I was going to. That wasn't what I was going for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like, it's I don't know. It's it's, it's com- very complex. Complex. Very complex. Yeah. Sophisticated. No, 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 wrong word. Um, man, that's quite sophisticated. Um, Breaking the mold. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. And uh, those are our three main kids and three main Digimon. Obviously, there are other characters. And we, that yeah, yeah there are no... Let's, let's, get let's the... sort of lightning round some of these. Who do we want to talk about next? My favorite... Well, let's get the parents out of the way. Oh. The what? I was the going... parents? Or should we continue with the kids? I, was I mean, the parents... To say kind of... Well, we could... Get... Yeah, I was going to say, like, Calamon or Impmon. I oh, I guess, we can... I guess we should cover Calamon and Impmon, too, yeah. Um... Calamon's actually the first character we see in the series. Yes. True. Um... Actually, there's not really much to say about Calamon. He's basically just a plot device. Con- it's a, yep. Calamon An is an adorable the- little plot device. Ca- Calamon is the Pikachu of this season. Yep. He is the mascot character. Even saying his own name in Japan. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> 
And um, he does have he, he, he has like, a few like an episode or two to himself. It's I, I Yeah, but he's not like he is kinda he is by and large a plot device. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. But he's he's a he's a doable plot device, and he kind of reminds me of Togepi actually more than uh more than um Pikachu, but yeah. I mean like I think that's really all we can say about Calamon. At well, this Calamon, point. well, Calamon's he's a lot, he's a Calamon's a lot like yeah. Calamon's a lot like Guillemon in that he's he's very infant. He's like, also kind of like Terriermon in that uh, he can kind of be a little shit sometimes. Yeah, oh, yeah he's a manipulative bastard when he's it comes to Gilmon. Fuck, he's manipulative as fuck. But I don't think. But unlike Terriermon, I feel like when he insults somebody, he doesn't really mean to. Like Terriermon, I think is just kind of being an asshole for being an asshole. But I don't think Calamon really knows better. <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong, but I yeah. I don't think either will. Probably get to that in the next part of this episode when right. we cover the second half of the series. But right, and Ipmon, who we don't really meet for a while, like Ipmon doesn't really pop up until like several episodes in. Yeah, episode. Well, yeah, brief appearance in six gets a big lot of screen time in episode eight. Yeah, yeah. I'd kind of like to talk about uh, him. Now, I like. Though, I like. He's it's... got. I think that he has maybe. The he's best just character arc in in Tame, yes. like definitely of the Digimon, and that's yeah. that's insane that the series would actually give like an individual Digimon such a good character arc. And not only just an individual Digimon, just dig- and not even just uh, plot devices. I would like not to point that, out that Impmon, he's a villain character for a good chunk of the show, and he's 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 my favorite with well because he has issues, he's damaged, he needs help. Yeah, god damn it. Yeah. And he's also Joe Pesci. Yeah, <laughs> Joe Pesci-mon. Joe Pesci-mon. I did not know that. <laughs> well, his voice is very... He's not actually voiced by Joe Pesci. Oh, yeah, but he's, he's voiced by Ken. Um, yeah, you know, it's the same actor who hey, does... By it's the, the same boom. actor who does Ken, uh, Demi Devimon, and Piedmon. Pizza, lots of spaghetti, you guys. Yeah, I, it actually now makes me want to just see Ken. Bada boom! <laughs> Oh, fucking. I, I can imagine Ken as the Emperor saying that, not necessarily Ken as he was in the it's, later half. I want both. Forget about I, it. Imagine, yeah, imagine about him dead panning that. You Bada always boom. need to listen up. Bada boom. I, can, I can do a good one. I can do a damn good one because I got the ax. I got the accent. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, you are from like one of those Eastish places, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Imp, Imp, well, okay, Impmon's kind of a villain, but it's kind of more a gag villain, because his job is just to create mischief and yeah, trouble. He's like, he's like a Team Rocket kind of villain. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, like, until he becomes sort of one of the main, it, it's it's pretty clear early on that he's just lashing out because he wants to fit in. Yeah. Um, he's, like, he's he's broken and damaged. And he needs help. I forget, did and they actually explain how any he idea got to this world in the first place? What? Uh, no, he just ended up there one he day. He just kind of showed up, yeah. 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 Well, good Actually, for him. let's kind of just talk about uh, about Ipmon as we go along with the plot, then. Yeah, because Ipmon's a very important plot character. And he made, yeah, he the, made me cry. Uh, the big things to establish, his tamers were unintentionally abusive. I think that's the best way to put it. Well, yeah, yeah, they were like there, five. There, there are issues. There are issues. Seriously, they were like five. They didn't know better. Uh, oh, right, oh wait, so, the, oh yeah. The, okay, I'm like the, the writers are fine. No, the kids. Okay, let's um, uh, let's actually talk about Hypnos next then, because they're kind of the closest thing we have to an antagonist for the first first part of the show. Yeah, for the first yes. like one third. No, uh, the first, yeah, the first quarter, first quarter of the show. Uh, they are definitely the antagonist characters, and they're, they're not exactly they're, good at their job. No, <laughs> no, they're the, they're the go- it's it's a government agency. It's like the government is finally doing something, basically, in this show. Um, I mean, they were like, trying to be nerd, they, but they didn't. Yeah, 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 they're they're nerve essentially. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. can make those references because it's the one anime Tom's watched. <laughs> Excuse me. That has scarred him for life. 
Excuse no, he's me. I, other anime that have yeah, started my, for life as well. Yeah, Brendan and Rob have really put me through like anime homework, basically. You need to watch Re Zero. Uh-huh. I need to watch what? Re Zero. I like every time I hear that, I think oh, I think people man. are saying Resident Evil Zero, and I'm like, I played that game like 20 times. Why do you want me to play it again? <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's let's talk about that off mic though. Okay. Yeah, I, I just wrote it down. Just watch that. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, okay, one thing about Yamaki, he made me want to get a cigarette lighter, because just flipping that top <laughs> up and down just seems like such a stress relief. Who is also Steve Bloom, and probably the most noticeable Steve of, Bloom. like, the Steve Bloom roles Oh, in this. fun fact, Steve Bloom also wrote several episodes for this series. He did, that's right. That's a, Ooh, I remember yeah. seeing his name in the writer's credits. Uh, I, think, yeah, I think I remember that, too, yeah. I don't remember, exa- um, I don't remember exactly which episodes he wrote, but... I know a lot of the hypnocentric ones were written by him <laughs> yeah. which which shows where where his priorities were um yeah. now, i i think this is actually the point where i want to uh talk about sort of the voice cast and what, how what, one more thing that really messed me up when when realized like when i was a kid because i didn't know that this was a different continuity so you thought, oh, you, you Kong, thought the teacher was, yeah, I thought that Kari was literally the teacher. Uh, I thought that one of those hypnosis well, girls was literally Yo Li. Um, well, that this ties I thought into that Yamaki that, was Matt. This this ties into that theory I've been teasing like throughout all these podcasts. But this is not the place I'm going to get into it. I'm going to wait till towards the end of Chambers to get into that. Um, all right, um, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. It's part of Matt's fever dream from his drug overdose. <laughs> 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 One thing I would like to point about Hypnos uh, is that either some somebody somebody in the in the sta- on their staff really likes Lovecraft. Yeah, no, this is this, oh, this no, season. Chiaki has openly said that he is a big Lovecraftian fan. Yeah, no, well, we t- we covered no, this in zero two. No, no, like, no, the, but I mean, that like, was a big thing going in. I, I mean. In continuity, in continuity, somebody has to be really into Lovecraft because one thing that is like referencing like Lovecraftian themes. The other thing is that this covert dark government agency has code names for their programs lifted straight out of Lovecraft's writing. Again, oh, Chiaki has written things for the Lovecraftian lore. It's something he is not oh, unfamiliar yeah. with. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, but really I, cool, I, yeah. I'm like, we, I, when I was rewatching this, I was like, and we will re- launch. This is called Yugo. This is called Shagai. And I'm like, really, really. Yeah, well, we. I remember. Is Yamaki I remember we talked about this. <laughs> is Yamaki? I remember we talked. About... I no, no, no. But I'm. Think of it. Think of it. The writer yeah. is one thing. The other thing, either, either Lovecraft doesn't exist in the. Lovecraft's work didn't exist in the Tamers universe, or Lovecraft's work exists in the Tamers universe, and like Yamaki is a huge nerd. Oh, okay, yeah, I get where you're going. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I get it. All right, and like Maybe. I, I think, uh, I think that Hypnos is also very definitely an uh, an uh, allusion to Nerve from uh, from Evangelion. Because well, now that I've seen Evangelion, I can kind of make that the, there, There's way too many like. <laughs> Yamaki is basically literally Gendo for a while. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that that's Although just with a insulting little, with a little to Yamaki. More personality. And little less little, abusive. little more personality to him. Yeah, a little less abusive. Um Yeah. One know, hell of a chain um, smoker. <laughs> oh yeah. Tamaki uh not Tamaki. Um, Yamaki. Takado. Oh. Takado. I combined Takado and Yamaki there. Oh god, but, what kind you of know, Takado's not actually his uh his kid or anything. No. Um, get in the robot, Takato. Because, I mean... Oh, that, that, yeah, that's that's, really, that's really 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 Takato. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, Takato is basically Shinji. Um, oh, come on! No! no. Like, Rika, Rika is basically Asuka, and I guess that leaves Henry as Rey. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Holy shit, no. Oh, no. God. God fucking... No, no, no. Oh, no. God. Takato is nowhere near as damaged as, as Shinji. Rika I am like walking back and forth right as now. Shit. As Asuka. Yeah, I mean, there's, there, there's, it's different, of course, but like the the personalities line up a little bit. If you squint, uh, very hard. Like, it's, uh, well, I mean, 
let, let, let's just move on. Um, let's let's talk about Hypnos itself. It's uh, so yeah, you go. It's really interesting because they're they're like they're human antagonists that aren't really antagonists. It's like this this shadowy government agency that's trying to eliminate Digimon, and due to the position they're in, that puts them at opposition with the kids in some ways, but also aligns them with their goals exactly in other ways. Because they think, uh, basically, the, the line of thinking is that uh, Digimon are aberrations that threaten the physical world and threaten people, so they need to stop them. Did they ever talk about what the first Digimon that broke through was? I shouldn't I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know if they did either. There's a lot of like beginning stuff that I feel like I can't. I'm trying to recall right now. It's just like, okay, when did this happen? When did that happen? I, if, if it's been said, it's probably in the latter half of the series. And yeah, probably. And, yeah. I mean, I, I uh, also uh, let me just point out that Yamaki is a huge whiny bitch during the the first part of the series. And he gets he needs to get laid. Time. <laughs> I would like to. Oh, well, he's well, he's dating. He's dating the, yeah, the he, only he, girl. He, see, the, the the question is though, is that before or after? Like he mellows out later on, or before they go to the digital? That's world? during. I, that's yeah. No, he's, like, he's, I, no, he's I, I remember. That girl. I remember. I'm like, pretty sure they live Riley? together. She she no. There, there's a line that uh, that she makes earlier on. Like she she gets out of the pool. After that's dub only. And get oh, that's dub only. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. In the dub, there is a line where she she said like she mentions turning down another date or something for work. Yeah. No. That that uh, what's what's her name? Riley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it Riley. Is Riley. Uh, yeah. No. I they just are... automatically think Yo Lee. Yeah. No. They are. They are. I think they are confirmed to be actually seeing each other. So, yeah, well, he's getting some. Well, he needs to get some more often. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of anger sex going on in that relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm yep. imagining them in BDSM gear. Oh, dear God, stop. Oh, so and you don't need to do BDSM gear to have and, very And Yamaki it. is the sub. Well, fucking. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh no! God damn it, Maddie, oh god! Why? And she's pegging him. Oh, no. <laughs> this, that's not what I. God damn it! You can have rough, vigorous sex without the, bringing out the gimp. <laughs> yeah, no. I was just thinking of the Maki's grumbling about Digimon the whole time they're fucking. That was all I was thinking about. <laughs> so wait, maybe <laughs> like damn wild ones. Riley's just <sighs> <laughs> no. Wait, they have co Digimon cosplay sex. Stop. <laughs> Fucking stop! He's like, no, look, stop worrying about the wild ones out there. Worry about the wild one in here. <laughs> Tom is, is right, guys. Tom is right. Yo Lee did grow up to be a freaking bed. <laughs> yes, I win. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with us? So many things. Oh. Um. I think oh, that question. Yeah. I think we should have I, asked that question back when we were writing the first. <laughs> oh my god! Stop. Okay. Um. I mean, w the problem is that there's not a whole lot of. I mean, we, what we see with him is kind of what we get for the most part. Mm -hmm. Like they're there to kind of they're there to like neutralize any threats. How we? I mean, they don't really. They're not really very effective at it. Yeah. yeah. I think I think a lot of these characters are these side characters are gonna we're gonna go more in depth with them um, as they become become more relevant to the plot and I think that yeah. I actually want to hold off on discussing Jerry until the no next Jer one Jerry because, is more part two yeah yeah because yeah. like her character arc really starts in part two here she's just a oh, except character. for episode twenty one Jesus Christ is well, that we'll the one where that. oh yeah yeah. That's that episode. Yep. Um, but, uh... Yeah, you I mean, guys want to launch into the plot? Finally? Yes, finally. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we start off with Calamon entering the, the digital... How how much how long are we into this point recording, by the way? We're almost an hour and a half in. <laughs> yeah, almost an hour and a half. <laughs> this is going to be a long one. Um, well, the, the first 24 episodes, like... 
yeah. a, a lot of it, it, it treads the same ground, just in yeah. subtly different ways. Yeah, no, that's right. Um, but start with Kalamon coming in, and then we also meet... Um, it, well, it's a weird thing, because it's kind of like the card... The, Takato and his friends are playing the card game, and what they're playing is happening as Kalamon is running for his life. Oh, if, I missed that somehow. That's I think that was just for the sake of narrative... Yeah, but, it, but it's interesting because that's the only. It's I mean because that's the only time we ever really see it happen. Except in the card game, Maelstrom doesn't get brutally murdered. Yeah, no. <laughs> it, 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 I just, oh, I thought it was interesting, but um, uh, but yeah. So Calvin, because and we meet Takato, and we also meet um, Kazu and Kenta. Yeah, Kazu and Kenta, the two biggest bros in the Digimon. <laughs> They to- they are totally the biggest bros, no homo. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> totally homo. <laughs> totally homo. <laughs> totally homo. And we mean this in the best way possible. But those two need to they those two have a lot of sexual tension they need to work out. <laughs> and so like what happens is that uh Takato just well, okay, first of all, Kazu kicks uh, Takato's ass at the card. Oh, game. wait, 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 wait. Takato, no, Takato wins that round. Oh, well, yeah. Kente, uh, like, Kazu usually kicks his ass. Kazu there is one wins. character I want to bring up. What's one that? last one. What? The oh? teacher. There is a yes. reason. She is a fucking horrible person in the in the sub. In the mm-hmm. sub? Oh, in the dub, she's a lot more strict but fair. Yeah, but in this one, she's like, I only took this job because I thought it looked good. <laughs> uh, Jesus! And I mean, even when even when they write that letter to go to the digital world, which in the sub, honestly, it sounds very kind of culty. A little. Good. Uh, we're yeah. going to another world. We're going. To- <laughs> oh my god. We're saying our goodbyes. Her boys response: and Girls, boys and girls, stop. Let's all no. go, go to, go the, to digital the digital world. world. Yeah, but her response in the sub is something along the lines of, "Do you have any idea how this is going to make me look?" Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I think I, prefer, I think I prefer the dub. <laughs> she is a terrible person. <laughs> yeah, dub all the way then. Um, yeah. The other uh, teacher yeah, isn't much anyway. better. He does not get the hint at all. Wait, who doesn't? There's the other friend zone. Oh, the teacher. Oh, Maury. Yeah, right, Poor right. Poor Mori. Talking Mori. <laughs> I mean, I she does that. have some mild concern for her students, but still, kind of a bitch. Yeah, in the sub, <laughs> in the dub, she's she's a little better. All right, so Takato finds a blue card randomly because the plot has to kick off somehow. Yeah, one of the one of his cards gets transformed, and uh, that's you know like kind of weird. Why did that happen? I don't think it really goes into that or why it was him or anything. Because it well, cause how but, are how are any of the other kids? Become the, the power they're of wishes. They're chosen. That's yeah. They're I guess they're just chosen. So we're um, not. I, I think this would have been a better, a, a bit better work. This would have worked a bit better if we'd have been shown that blue card appeared for a bunch of other people, but just you know, nothing of note happened in the end. Yeah. Oh yeah, because blue like, cards don't even show up for Kazu, Kenta, and Jerry when they get their partners. No, they they just kind of the blue card is more later that they start becoming more like yeah, like they I start mean, appearing more. And it's kind of Tamers is Tamers is really good at building the world and how it works and setting that all up together, but. Uh, they kind of drop the ball on this one just a little bit. There's some unexplained stuff that you just got to wave off as, well, the plot needed to happen somehow. Because yeah. with, with me, it makes sense because because of uh, Shibumi will get to that uh, connection to Lee's dad. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't really talk about him, but he'll he'll become important to the plot later on. So Yeah. It, yeah, I guess we'll you, see you know what we're discussions for next that. time, too. Yeah. Parents, I mean, yeah. God, there's so um, much. So much. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, Takato is, I think he's late for class. Um, because he's like, I gotta see what this blue card's like. And then it, he swipes the thing and it ends up turning into a Digivice later on. Uh, but, like, he just draws his OC Digimon. He Like, he, uh, your name the hedgehogs it. 
uh, is his Gilmon. And yeah, Sonic OC. So, he Sonic OC is the Digimon. It's the f- <laughs> yeah, which type. for for those who don't know, typing your for those listening who don't know about this, typing your first name and add the Hedgehog, you will probably find a fan character with matching that name. Oh, huh. I've got one of the best ones. Oh, I got the most emo motherfucker you can imagine. The second result for for Andrew the Hedgehog is Andrew the Demonic Hedgehog. And now I gotta check... Mind Christ Tears of Blood, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Now I have to check this. Alright, while Maddie does that, we'll we'll sort of continue Uh, on with the plot. But Uh, one thing thing of of note about uh, Gilmon is that he's the first virus type, Protect Digimon. Yeah, because oh, yeah, he's he making is. because he's making an edgy Sonic OC with Metal Greymon's hair, and um, also technically that's because G- Gilmon is kind of an anomaly. Yeah, I mean he's he he's an abomination, a freak of nature that shouldn't exist in this world or in the digital world. Probably. Easy Yamaki. Uh. <laughs> um, so yeah, he just randomly tries swiping his his drawing like a card and it and like the the no he deeper... tries swiping the whole notebook yeah he does dumbass <laughs> he's like what it got stuck well that sucks did i break it already and uh the d terminal's like uh yeah sure what what the fuck why not okay, i'll make your <laughs> digimon real <laughs> santa came early Santa came. Damn it, Maddie. <laughs> Awkward pause. Anyway. Um, I think that this is our most sexual podcast yeah, so far. Yeah, it, it really kind of is. Oh, God. That... Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, never mind. Um, so, there's the dream sequence, which I thought always thought was really cool. Although I never really... What, what was that Pokemon? Uh, Pokemon? Really? <laughs> wow. Wow, Tom? Really? Really, Tom? Really? You idiot? Uh, the, what was that Digimon that Renamon was fighting? Lynxmon. Lynxmon. There are a lot of armored Digimon in this series. Yeah. Yeah. That that, that fight seemed kicked ass, though. Because, like, there's the she had the trench coat and the glasses, and I'm like, yes. So, yeah, the trench coat she never uses again. <laughs> I like that coat. Train anymore later. Yeah. So what ends up happening is that uh, Takato, you know, after his dream, he finds out his digi egg hatches, and he decides to go off and play some Pokemon Go. Digimon Go. Yep. Chases after it, finds it in this really cool looking industrial area. Of oh town. god! I just realized. Yeah, that basically is the first instance of, di- of Pokemon Go. <laughs> yeah. They still um, they still have on that episode of Digimon. Not you heard right. it here. You, you you heard it here first, folks. We're not saying. We're just saying. I mean, we're not making a definitive statement, but you can draw your own conclusions. Um. So yeah, he finds Gilmon, uh, who like destroys a rat or something, and then, then in the dub, what we hear, the motherfucking. Fucking we get, Davis. We get the Davis oh, of narrators. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, what? The dub narrator has Davis's voice? No, he, like, literally is Davis. He's Davis's personality, his it, voice, everything. He is they brought the, Davis back as the narrator. Yes, yeah, he did. is the stinger narrator. And the, uh, and the intro narrator, like the previous on... Uh, yeah, I, I haven't caught any of those, so I couldn't tell him to shut up with those from the version I was watching. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some of his notable ones... Whoa, was that an earthquake? I guess Jerry won't be the only one that's shaken up now. <laughs> what the fuck, Davis? <laughs> yeah, Davis is back in all his former glory, basically. We call it glory, Dude, right? Does peanut butter really go well with bananas? Fuck off, Davis. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the uh, the Digicast shitting on Davis Part Three shit harder. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad they brought him back. I, I thought I was gonna miss bitching about Davis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no, 
the digital gods are very kind. Um, we can you can call so it a lot of what happens. Uh, a lot of what happens through the uh, the next few episodes is basically just Takato trying to hide Gilman and. And uh, he sneaks yeah. around and follows him to school and uh, he, tells the principal that he's a bat. He tries to he tries bat. to conceal him at home in a cardboard box, and I'm like, nope, nope, you're not. This isn't a snake. A snake? What? Yeah, and like his parents know that he's hiding a dog or something, or yeah. they think it's a dog. And I mean, you know, again, Gilman is a big dumb puppy, but he's not quite a dog. Not he quite. inhales bread. <laughs> yes, yes, he, he is a carb monster. Yeah, he really is. Yeah, I thought that Carbomon was uh was Terriermon's evolution. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see here. This is also where we meet uh Henry and Terriermon for the first time because he's uh he picks up on the fact that uh, Terriermon, is, or they, they pick up on the fact that Terriermon is, that Gilmon is a Digimon and that Takato is his tamer. Um, because they This is where we, where we get the, the first example of Terriermon being a little shit, where he's like, if you can't keep track of your Digimon, you must not be a very good tamer. Yep. And Henry calls him out, he's like, Terriermon, that's rude. But Henry... Moment time. See, it's even worse in the du- in the sub because he says it very sing song like songly. Mama die. <laughs> so yeah, it's even even more shitty. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then um, and then like they're attacked by Renamon and Rika who just show up. And uh, Takato's like, I dreamt about you. Which, you know... He did! It's a great way to talk to a girl. I mean, yeah. he's, he's he's not wrong, but that's... Uh... Yeah, Rika, pardon. <laughs> yeah, Rika, Rika does not let that go, either. Like, she, hold, she holds Rika on to that one. <laughs> she holds on to that one. Which, I mean... I was, But, I mean, by that point it was too late. I was already done with the shipping thing. So, no, you just want to hurt it. yourself. Yeah, that. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so yeah, t- um, Takato learns one of the big things about Gilamon is that when he tends to fight, he gets a little Berserk. out of control. Yeah, feral. Feral. That's the word I'm looking for. Feral sounds about right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so um. Then, uh, like, he, he does find a place for him to stay. Uh, he bestows him at a park. Uh, and, uh, like, in this one small structure type thing. Uh, but then, um, like, Renamon uh, and R- uh, Rika just keep pursuing them for a bit. Uh, but what happens next is kind of a, an interesting de- writing decision where... You get uh, Terriermon as the first one to to digivolve in the series. Yeah, yeah. Which is not what you would expect. No, you expect the first one to yep. the, like the lead to be the yeah, one. But, uh, I, yeah, it's like uh, the plot points out that Terriermon actually did this before, and just yeah, with girls. Yeah, ah, yeah, uh, yeah, it's true. He just does not want this to happen again, for the most part. For for mm-hmm. good reasons. Yeah. Oh yeah, an interesting music choice when Terriermon first evolves is that they don't play they play a um instrumental version of the Evo song, not the full Evo song. That's safe for Renamon. Mm-hmm. Huh. Also, I would like to point out that Tamers has the best evolution sequences, like Yes, yes. Holy shit. Like, super mm-hmm. gorgeous. And right on, on one hand, those look super gorgeous, awesome, brilliantly animated, so so well drawn, and then like uh, when I was, it also looks painful. Yes, that's exactly what I was going at when I was uh, when I was rewatching it. I was like, I'm like, their skin is go is getting ripped off of them, basically. Yeah. 
the uh, the card slash sequences are pretty cool. Too. Yeah, yeah, and slash yeah, but like that, those get a lot those get a lot older a lot quicker because they play more frequently than the Digivolution ones. Yeah, but they're still pretty but cool. Yeah, uh, Evolution fight song wise, also again at least in the Japanese version, definitely one of the best in the yes. franchise. Evo One Vision. Uh, eh, maybe on Slash, but you know it works. I like Slash, but like Slash would kind of irritated me because they would play the beginning of it a lot of a lot of the time when when they were uh, swiping blue cards or basic evolution cards, and then go to Evo just like cut off, and I'm like, why did you bother with starting Slash anyway? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I will say this about card slashing. To this day, I will sometimes just m- mumble "card slash" to myself whenever I swipe my debit card. <laughs> and I, I, I love how I love how Lee, despite being this old, you know, cool non-combat, I can't pacifist dude, he has the most elaborate pose entrance to his slashing. Like, what a show off! <laughs> what a drama queen! Jesus. Se- like several um, post changes before he swipes the card through the device, and I'm like, was that really necessary? <laughs> but yeah, as long as uh, as long as we're on the topic of uh, of uh, you know, Terrier Mon has evolved before. Uh, let's go right into that, and in, uh, because the next episode's about that. Uh, oh wait, first off, let me let's mention what Gargamon almost does to Rika. <laughs> Well, what does he almost say to her? I forget. He, no, he almost fills her full of holes. <laughs> yeah, no. Because he, he, defeated, he defeated the enemy, but he still has gun hands, so he is going to shoot them. Yep. He's gonna... Uh, I mean, what do you expect, really? Hey, hey, if I would probably be trigger happy if I got gun hands suddenly. I would be like, yeah! Yeah, we've talked about this. We've yeah, also about the, this, the yeah. fights in this series can get a lot more brutal than they have in the previous ones. Like, again, Renamon trying to stop Gargamon, digging her claws into his face and just yanking upward. <laughs> yeah, and the fights, is, uh... the fights tended also to get more elaborate because most fights in Adventure were like, I will now try signature attack, signature attack didn't work, I will now evolve to higher form and signature attack again. Well, this time there's like cards involved also. And a lot more strat- yeah, also, there's a lot, there's more a lot of side chomping. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and like more, usually more than one attack per Digimon. Yeah. Yeah, Tamer, Tamer's was really a, well, the kids can handle this type of thing, I feel like. Um, which, I mean, I don't, I don't know what they expected when they got the, you know, Chiaki to write this, but... Um... But yeah, let's let's talk about uh, how Henry met Terrier Mon. Uh, oh, the, car, the video yeah. game. Yes, he got a game from America, which I'm calling bullshit on because America never gets anything before Japan when it comes to yeah. anime. Yeah, yeah especially <laughs> especially with Digimon, we didn't even get most of the Digimon games. Yeah, yeah, shit, we never even got one of the movies. Yeah, we didn't I don't think get we get the vital plot point about how. You know how who who exactly Rio is? Like how how did we get a game that Japan or was he in China at that point? Um, um or is is he full Chinese or is he yeah. half Chinese? Half Lee, Japanese? Lee is half Chinese. His dad is Chinese. Yeah. His mom is Japanese. Because of course they can't just be full foreign. Every 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 foreigner in anime is half Japanese. That's how it works for some reason. Oh, and then let's not forget, we get the obligatory white girl named Alice. <laughs> well, that's, that's later. That's way later. Yeah. We're not, we'll get to that. We'll but get yeah, to that. Seriously, though, if you're a blonde girl and you're part American or full American and you're in an anime, your name's probably Alice. <laughs> Odyssey. Noted. Uh, Unless you're in serial experiments, Lane and are actually Japanese. When uh, funny mistranslates your name as Arisu. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't want to know. Anyway, so a lot of this first quarter is 
just kind of dealing whatever monster of the week shows up. Mm-hmm. And Takato trying to be a less shit tamer. And Rika kind of learning to not be kind of a pain in the ass. And Yamaki playing, being ineffective. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, there's a lot of... Let's see here. What's the next big plot point? Well, um, there was that whole episode with De- Ice Yeah, Spider-Man. that happened. Oh, and no, no, it's it's- that weird episode seven. Yeah. Um, that weird digital thing that was swallowing up I, I, oh, I the just wanted to bring that up, yeah. That was a that was an odd episode, yeah. Hmm. Which does which but it was Yeah, it was kinda of interesting because it really only happened to Giomon. Yeah, because everybody else had the yeah. common sense to step away from the anomaly. Yeah. Now was that Hypnos that was creating that? No, we they no. they blasted oh, that okay. they they detected that and they blasted it out of existence. That was the ticking clock in the episode because Hypnos were deleting that and they needed to get Guillermo out before that happened. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, we skipped over. Uh, we skipped over the um, where uh, where Rika and uh, we we skipped over. Um, oh yeah, her evolution. Origin. Yeah. Which evolution? Renamon's oh, yeah, the mom. Uh, and. Yeah, and the uh, yeah when uh, when Rika makes a contract with Renamon to uh, to digivolve her. Yeah, apparently a lot of Digimon wanted Rika. Apparently, Lost I I couldn't see it, but apparently Lost and Translationmon spotted Apocalymon in that bunch. What? <laughs> huh? No, I did not no. see Apocalymon in that bunch. No, I mean what 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 happens is that Rika makes a contract with Cubimon. Oh fuck <laughs> off! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? It's, it's, Keep your Madokas out of this. It's a Madoka reference. Uh, I mean, I, I had to make it. It was, it was did right you? there. Did you really, yes. though? Yes, I did. It was kind of weak. Sorry. Fuck you. You wish. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. I'm, I'm saying you wish. I'm sorry. I did. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, Rika becomes the, the... This is, like, after she becomes the Digimon queen, right? Yeah, because... The, yeah. The, kicking everyone's ass in a card game. Except Rio. Even though she's a girl. Except Rio. Yeah, except Rio. I do love that one crowd of passerby. She walks plus. Dude, it's the Digimon queen. Man, she's kind of cute. You th- she's dead! <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen. <laughs> That doesn't make it better. And these are like, 11. I don't know, 17 plus guys commenting oh, about this. Yeah, yeah, true. Well, I mean, this is Japan. Holy yeah, Japan fucking don't give a hell. Fuck. Japan don't give a yeah, fuck. Age of Consent's still 13 there, so that, that's a fine line you're walking, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like, she becomes the Digimon queen, and all of a sudden, all these Digimon are like, "Hey, we want in on that." And Renamon you're like, not making it better. Asses. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. Um, we want a piece of that action that you're offering. That's not better at all. No, no. no. <laughs> no. We want think... to be your partner. That. that wait, let's leave it. Wait, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, there's no way to do make this better. Um, we want to beat people. <laughs> and we think you can help us we, do that. We it. want to engage in a bestial relationship with Nanny, you. Nanny, stop it. No, that's not, that's, <laughs> that's not even what they're saying. <laughs> oh, my God. What a, uh, we we have a lot Kari, on mind today. We are today. so off the beaten path. Yeah. We, want to um, en- we want to enter in a business arrangement with you into a mutually beneficial business arrangement. Sure. I think that's the least innuendo y way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's go with partner that. up no furry. <laughs> no. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. God. Another interesting. Okay, the two things, the two mechanics we also need to bring up. One, D Digivolution is a lot different. Yeah. It takes, yeah, it takes, a, it takes, a, takes a while. Longer. Yeah. I don't really know why that happens, because usually it should be just be when you run out of energy, you should just go back, but 
Apparently, these guys have a lot of energy. Or it's not that, maybe, in this, because, you know... Apparently, it was something like it's a lot of data to burn off or something. Yeah, I guess so. But, with, yeah. With, and with what, Terrier, they're, what they're doing is they're... With Terrier Mon, it's also, I think, that the amount of aggression in him would prefer him to stay Gargamon. Yeah. What, yeah, because it's, it's, it's also like an entire ne- episode almost. Renamon never had Brown problems. On. That there were never seen yeah. Renamon having. Problems. It took him a full day to de digivolve. Yeah, from Groundmon. No, two days, I think. Yeah, uh, it was two days or no, no, just one. I don't remember. It was, it was yeah, almost a full episode. Just, uh, do we want to just jump right ahead to uh, to Gilmon digivolving? Yeah. Well, there's one of the mechanic. I said there's two mechanics. There's one of the mechanic that should probably be mentioned right off. And that is that this season, Digimon die, and they don't come back this time. Yeah, that. They get eaten. I mean, they might. No, no they don't. They don't. There's, there's, no, there's no primary village. There's no, you know, yeah, and, nursery of digi well, eggs. I mean, if, the, if their data doesn't get loaded, they might be able to reconfigure Maybe they they, nope. they they never really go into that. Nope, nothing like that is. So- as far as as far as the concern, it's just that once you're gone, you're gone. It doesn't yeah, matter if you're in cool. our world or the digital one. Death and is I mean, final I, this time, which is kind of shit yeah. for Leomon. I mean, it it, it does. It does, like, really raise the stakes, but I'm sure that that's nothing that's going to actually happen to any of the main characters. No. no! Why would that happen? I mean, they're the main characters. They're I mean, important. this is a kid's show. Yeah! This is a kid's show. you got to keep it light and happy. Exactly. So we'll just kill the same guy who keeps dying, right? Leo Mon dies! <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't need to say it right now, but yeah. <laughs> Leo Mon dies and Snape kills Dumbledore. And Rosebud's the sled. <laughs> Fuck, I hadn't seen that one yet. Vader is Luke's father. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Soylent Green is people. Okay, okay. That's, <laughs> let's, let's just go back. Jesus dies. Back. J- Jesus comes back after three days. Wait, he died? <laughs> I hadn't gotten to that part yet. We were I was so... like... Uh, I'm still way back in the sermon on the. Mi- oh, guys! Spoilers. Do- yeah, sorry, <laughs> guys. <laughs> we're taking this joke way too far. <laughs> Let's bring it back. Welcome to the Digicast, where we spoil things that aren't Digimon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, Kylo Ren has a huge nose. Okay, seriously. <laughs> um, oh God, what was I going to say after that? But yeah, no, it, it was. The, the, I don't know. Somebody take it, because I'm trying to find a place to come back. Uh, I People mean, the die Renamon, when they are killed. That's that's what you're. Yeah, trying to I mean say. the the Renamon episode with Dokukumon, which by the way, this continues my point that Dokukumon is probably the most dangerous Digimon of all time, because <laughs> every single fucking time that thing pops up, it is just a nightmare. Which one is Dokukumon? The spider. The, 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 the spider. The, spider. Okay. the tarantula. Okay. Yeah. Like, this is the point I make up. Like, every time Tokugumon's wrong, someone's almost gonna die. Yeah. That's how yeah. they never that actually is. die. No, but, like, what is it, like, what is it with insectoid Digimon that just, just like, just being it, assholes? Like, Koagamon and Dokugumon? Like, Slimon. Just, like, Flymon can be a pain in the ass, too, yeah. I think people just have an in- innate dislike of insects. And arachnids. Well, that's good. And, ara- and arachnids. Well, that yes. goes without yeah. saying, yeah. Uh, I really don't like spiders. And here we are diametrically opposed because I love them. <laughs> well, I don't mind. You, you are entitled to not have a soul. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'm sorry. That was that. That was. I think that qualified as rude. <laughs> I, I should apologize. A little. <laughs> Don't worry. Moment time. Don't worry. Don't worry, Andy. I'm not. Uh, uh, I am entitled to not having a soul. You're entitled to not having a spine. Uh, I, I, I can't dispute that one. <laughs> I um. <sighs> ah, th- yeah, there's no way to combat that one. <laughs> All right, moving on. 
Um, um, do we want to do I want to talk about uh, Gilman's evolution now? Sure. Yes. Um, he is the last. Because this is when Imperio in- to to digivolve. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, I guess there's Gilman, and then there's also the Ice Demimon episode we should probably bring up. Yeah, uh, well, I think the Gilman's important because that's when uh, Impmon gets a big deal of screen time. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, let's see here. What's the w- which one is the episode where like he's jumping around on the cars? <laughs> oh, that's nineteen. Oh, yeah, that's, that's not for a while. There, there's a line in there that I want to touch on when we get there. Okay. Um, but yeah, Impmon's going around causing chaos, and uh, he's goading these Digimon into being like, "Hey, you're not going to let some human control you, are you?" He's, uh, and this like seems to be a big part of his character arc, which you know, takes on a new meaning when we find out sort of what his backstory is. Um, yeah. He, yeah, but... He's a, uh, he, he's a strong, independent mon who don't need no tamer. It's funny because, like, he keeps bringing up the whole you don't really need your humans to control you, but it never really pays off. Like, none of the no, Digimon it, ever really question it that much. Yeah, but because... It, it doesn't pay off because he's, he's telling that as a lie to himself, mostly. And True, it's yeah. kind of, you know, noticeable that and it's yeah. kind of easily easy to read that he's mostly that he's saying this to mostly lash out. Yeah. Don't be so soon soon, Mon Chan. <laughs> he's my favorite. Imp- Impmon is so good. He's like he's a, he's an obnoxious little shit, and not in the the lovable little shit sense that Terrier Mon is. He does try to straight up kill Kulamon, Kalamon at one point. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. He does, but he he gets so he's so in depth. He like, gets into a... this. Go on, sorry. He, he's this weird sort of pseudo antagonist where he's not like someone that they actually need to worry about because he's completely ineffectual. Hey, at one point but... he actually helps them while still claiming to be antagonistic. Yeah. Yeah. So, but um, let's see here. He taunts Devidramon because he wants to feel like a big boy, um, like that. That like, even though I'm, I'm, I'm not a Digimon, you want to do that with? Yeah, like I'm fair in saying that he's basically just doing this to play big boy and get his shits and giggles, right? Yeah, more or yeah. less. Um, and then Devidramon breaks out, and Itmon's like, "Oh fuck." And uh, Gilmon has to digivolve to Growlmon and step in. I, I would like yeah. to point out that uh, after being after a while of being oh fuck, Impmon's like, oh remember it's me who let you out. I let you out. I freed you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's a good point. Uh. So yeah, there's a huge thing where it's like. The, the whole Growlmon not being able to digivolve or go back in, in his digivolution thing. Like, they pay a lot of attention to that. Yeah, because yeah, he just he just won't turn back. No. Oh. Takes the power of rainbows. <laughs> Gay. <laughs> you call. Listen, there are a lot of undertones in this season. Uh, but, uh, um, let's see. Uh, so, Graumon, and then, I guess I step him on, who is voiced by Matt this season. Yeah, and who is not like he is in the next season, voiced by Christopher Walken. Yeah, no. What, we'll really? That. <laughs> not, not really? Not actually but... voiced. He, he's just a Christopher Walken impersonator. God damn it. I gotta have more cowbell. <laughs> I got a then, fever. And the prescription... I'm... Is more cowbell. I'm looking forward to Christopher Walken Ice Devimon so much. <laughs> uh, but this Devimon, yeah. is, this Ice Devimon is fucking intense. terrifying. Or, yeah. He's... Oh, oh. One thing I want to touch on uh, really quickly, like back when uh, Impmon's scaring the couples at the park or whatnot, uh, Takato goes to the park and gets apprehended by a policeman. Who is Foghorn Leghorn? Yes. I said, boy, what are you doing out here boy, this late? Boy, I, 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 said, I said, boy, what are you doing around this park here, boy? I will and never, like, oh. ever understand 
why 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 American dub need feel the need to do this? Uh shits and giggles mostly. I mean it's it <laughs> it's just this one bit character, but it's like so fucking obviously Foghorn Leghorn. I love it. <laughs> Yeah. And then his teacher bails him out. Yeah, because um, because grown up Kari. But yeah, oh, no, not the really. Ice Kari. Cometh, the ice cometh. The the ice mat cometh. The ice mat cometh. That one is just kind of creepy. It's really creepy and kind of terrifying. Yeah, be- a little bit. Um. Yeah, because kind of some vaguely sexual undertones to it a little bit. Maybe? Yeah, even without the sexual, this is I... this is a forced and abusive relationship that he he's trying to push onto her. I need yeah. an adult. It's it's if we if you allow me to make a reference to uh oh dear I I, I lost the word give give me a moment. Oh wait wait wait. Wait, Tom made the, uh, I need an adult thing. Uh, I believe Ice Devimon is an adult, uh, is an adult level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he can, he can respond with, I am an adult. I would like to, no, no, because. You really took this in a bad place, Andy. And I was go, I was going, uh, I remember where I was going. I was going to say that if you allow me to make a reference to a more modern piece of popular culture, this is, this is where we have a Malachite situation. Malachite. Nobody. I don't follow. I'm sorry. Nobody here watches Steven Universe, really. No. I've been meaning to no. get on that, but Dan's gonna get me on it. We're gonna do like a series of me watching it for YouTube. Do it. Do it. I only it's... watch good. Shows. We're gonna. We're gonna. It's very. Don't know when. It's very good. It's very principle. Like... Well, we've all we've all, we've also got like three other things we're working on, so we'll get to it eventually. Yeah. When you. Tell me when you'll be doing that because I will want to watch okay. you watch it. Okay. So yeah. So now that Maddie's uh Maddie's reference has fallen completely flat. Again. <laughs> it seems to happen. Um Yeah, the whole thing traumatizes Rika and she's like, I'm sorry, Renamon, I'm breaking up with I you. I hate Digimon. No, no, that's way too nice. That's way too nice for Rika. That's not what she says. She says, I fucking hate Digimon. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that is what she says. Maybe without the fucking, because (laughs) it's a kid's show. Oh, God, no. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, no. I meant the word fucking. Okay. Are we we really at this point where we can't even say fucking without, like... Well, she didn't okay. say it, is my point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was, I, I fucking hate Digimon, is what she didn't say. My brain swapped those words, and it was, I hate fucking Digimon. <laughs> which, let's hope she does. <laughs> because, you know, the Digimon series is, is for children. This podcast, not so much. Yeah. Yeah. Nope, nope. Oh, and she and she spends a good like episode or two, like completely separating herself from that world. And Renamon is yeah. Yeah, well, not and Renamon <laughs> is not if Calamon has anything to say about it. Oh, of course, <laughs> it's Calamon getting the fucking robot, Rika. I think Cal- yeah, Calamon's really ca- also a very important character to Rika, particularly. Yeah. He he does take special care to form bonds with her more than he does the other. Yeah, because I think because he recognizes that Rika is the one who needs it the most. And I think mm-hmm. that the like there was no resistance with Lee and Takado. They were Kelamon's just hey, one of your friends, and the guys are like, yeah, sure. All right, ah, fuck it, let's do it. Yay, let's play. And then they mess up the, the playing field at school at night and make a make a, he- make a hexagram as a fucking summon sign. <laughs> and then are weirded out when a demon Digimon appears. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, Sorry, I, I... So let's see here. Is there anything important we have to... Uh, oh god, have we gotten everything? Yet until we... Uh, Hit the uh, the de- the the devas. I think that's all the major points. Like the, it was like ev- everything else. I think just 
fleshes out. Like more I think, the, like uh, the first the first quarter is mostly just them getting the point where they can actually uh, call themselves Digi Dustin. Wait, well, one yeah. more thing. There's one more thing we didn't we didn't touch on before the Deva. Which, what's that? Uh, the entire <laughs> point, the, the the bit where uh, Takato's friends uh, find out about Gilmon. Oh, you mean Kazu and Kenta? No, that's after. That's before the Deva. Yeah, that's... that's before the Deva. That's before the Deva because that culminates during the first Deva. Um. No, I, I'm pretty sure that it's. Or oh wait, I think does he show it to uh to Jerry before the? Yeah, yeah, because he first. I no, well, no, yeah. I think yeah, because no, he sh- kind of shows it to Kazu and Kenta, and, they, and then they, they don't. They, they kind of run. They freak oh, out, yeah, they and then he turns. Then he shows it to Jerry, and then he shows it to Jerry, and Jerry's like, "Oh, he's so cute." Because and then Kazu and Kenta kind of come um, around. I think you mean cool. Yeah, but the entire Whatever. point of that was uh, like because he wanted to show it to Kazu and Kenta because. Kazu was kicking his ass at the game, and the cat finally loses his and goes uh, loses his temper and goes like, "Yeah, but that's not important. What's important is when there are real Digimon battles." There, and the guys are like, "There are no real Digimon battles," and the cat just can't hold it in it in anymore. He he has he is like part of this you know different world than his friends, and he feels that he's somehow lacking. As a tamer, because he keeps getting his ass handed to him by Kazu, mm-hmm. and that's what prompts him to show them the to show him to show them Gilmon, and that in turn leads to Kazu and Kenta being like, uh, "We can't compare, really. The guy has a real Digimon partner, so what are we going to do?" Yeah, that's like after. Um... I, I think he's really outed as a tamer, uh, sort of when the 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 Deva start showing up. So after the first yeah. Deva fight, um, they actually because oh, Miharamon makes himself known. Yeah, yeah, boy. Uh, but let's um let's actually uh, quickly mention that uh, Rika and Renamon do make up because I think we kind of let that uh, plot point dangle. Yeah, a bit. yeah. no, they do um, make up. Yeah, but then um. Juggernaut. Fucking juggernaut, juggernaut comes right before the uh, the Devas. The Juggernaut, bitch! Well, Juggernaut and Devas... <laughs> well, no, yeah. Juggernaut and Devas coincide with each other. It's because of um, Juggernaut that the first Deva comes through. Juggernaut. Oh, right. Holy yeah. shit, they named that Juggernaut in the dub version. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, you got a problem with that, boy? Yeah, it's called Shagai. It's a Lovecraft reference in the original. Oh. Oh, I figured as much, but... Okay, that's why I was like, oh, the Juggernaut is a Lovecraftian reference? It's also, yeah, although it's also the Juggernaut only... Juggernaut is a pretty apt name for this program. Also, it's, it's the, the only decent scene bitch. in that terrible, crappy X-Men movie. <laughs> Which one? The X3. Oh, the worst of them all. Yeah, the one that I actually went to go see in theaters. Oh, you poor and... man. I didn't want to go see it. I was dragged to go see it, and I hated it because my cousin and his girlfriend, who was also a friend of mine, were making out in front of me the entire time. So I have a t- so I have a t- I have a terrible movie playing, and I have two people making out in front of me the entire time. Yeah. That movie had one good thing going for it. Ne- needless to say, I'm a- I'm lucky to be alive right now. That movie had a very good portrayal of the beast, though. Yeah, beast was okay. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. Anyway, um, like, Yamaki's basically just like, well, I am going to try to start the third impact <laughs> and, uh, get rid of all the Digimon at once. And not only does he not do that, he brings about one of the, like, the fucking, like, gods. Demigods. The personal, yeah, one of the a fucking demigod. Yep. And um, they basically take it. The Digimon Overlords basically take take the activation of Shagai as 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 an as, a, as an attack and send out a retaliating force of one, which is yeah. which is I still find that extremely stupid. You have these twelve demigods. Why not send them all at once? Because. I think it's a matter of the fact that they can't all get through at one time. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, these are some strong beings. They, de- they demonstrated they can get through in two. 
Yeah. The most yeah. the most like, Digimon has gotten through at, in one field was the three fly Beamon. Yeah, hmm. but three Deva is much better. Interesting if true. Hmm. Three Deva yeah. would have been much better than one Deva. Oh yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, cool. but like they they still put up a really good fight, like one at a time. Oh yeah, they do. <laughs> Except for two of them, or three of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the the. I mean, yeah. Every one of them kind of, almost every one of them kind of does a decent. Well, no, the the rooster was kind of a. The rooster, the snake, and Kumbiramon. I the the snake worst was... of the Davis. Wait, oh, the snake kind of well, the, the snake, the snake took all three of them. Okay, yeah. The... The, the snake took all three of them working together to to defeat. Yeah, like, that was the point of it. They they had to work together, but yeah, let's start with the tiger where uh, they uh, you've all need the they 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 they. They had, that's I the first time they go to ultimate. Words. It's the first time yeah. they go to ultimate matrix evolution. Where, yep, yep. it's uh, and it's interesting because you know you show Growlmon was the last of the Digivolutions, but War Growlmon is the first of the ultimate Digivolutions. I still prefer yeah. the Japanese name there, but... I do like Megalo Growlmon a lot yeah. more. It yeah. does have a nice ring to it. Yeah, it does, but, I mean, War Growlmon, I mean, you know he means business. And then this is, uh... And... This is when, um... Like, T- Takado, like, his sync ratio with Growlmon goes off the charts, I think. And, yeah. Yeah. He gets, the, like, part, at least partial impact from all the blows Megalo Growlmon is getting. Yeah, and gets knocked yeah. unconscious when Mihiramon takes a gigantic bite into his Growlmon's side. Yeah. Yep, uh, the, uh, me. Miharamon? Mihiram. Mi- Mihiramon, uh, I believe, is... Uh, yeah, Mihiram. Version may vary. Mm-hmm. Tiger. Tiger, tiger, tiger. That tiger, that tiger, fuck you up. And then, uh, and then later they fight a bird. A bird, bee, bird, bee, bird, bee. Let's see, alright, let's, 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 let's recap. Let me just recap. I'm referencing oh. Kung Pao. She is. Oh, that, oh, that fucking way. I hated that movie. Um, <laughs> Kung Pao is the greatest <laughs> fucking movie. Terrible movie. I hated that fucking movie. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Um, let's see. All right, well, let's go through. There was the tiger, so, the snake. Yep, and the, and the snake's important to talk about because, like, by that point, Gilman's like, completely outed to all his friends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah more or <laughs> less. And nobody gives a shit damn. Yeah, no, no, they, no my, they my, love it. One of my favorite things about Tamers is like, you know what? Let's check without disguises. Just let's walk through the city, and nobody cares. Like nobody. No, he's a shit. Like the, there's some children that go like, "Oh, you have a cool Digimon." Yeah, uh, his name is Gilmon. It's a man in a suit. And and the and the parents like, and the the mom of that one kid is like, "Oh, that's very well made. Congrats." Okay, now we need to go. Bye. <laughs> And I'm like, really, really? God damn it! Nobody, nobody pays any mind to the giant. Well, not giant, but to the pretty damn big red lizard. Nope. Yeah. Well, I get it. Um, it's Tokyo. They're used to kaiju. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, then, uh, then they fight the uh, mega Rooster. ultra chicken. Yeah, while they go on vacation. And that yeah. was the point when I. Uh, that was uh, the rooster uh, was the point where I said, okay, there's a theme going here. Each of them has three horns and a rabbit before the mom. So I'm waiting for the from, for the rabbit from Hurricane Touchdown now. Which hmm. was until the, and then, until the mom. I think. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah, was, until, uh, yeah, and which she does come on, but we'll get to that. Yeah, but, yeah, um, oh, and this was, but, this was um, like the the first time that you watched the show. You noticed that? Yeah. Huh. Well, you were a clever little kid. Yeah, you were. Well, there. Uh, and then we had the, it, we it's had a the, themed we, mini boss squad, okay? Yeah. I, so we um, had a, yeah. Anyway, the, the, uh, the vacation with, with the episode chicken. is when they learn about that they are called the Dave. The Dave. The Dave. 
Yeah. Uh, we had it was a uh, okay. So right, tiger, snake, owl. chicken. We had the we had the go- the bull and the ram, we had which the were rat. together. No bull and sheep. Bull and sheep. Sorry. And at one point, there's the rat. Yeah, there's a point the rat. Yeah. And then there's there's See, the horse. Oh, oh God. That fucking horse. That thing almost killed him on. I, I you know, cried. You know, I think it's kind of. You, you know the thing that I find kind of weird? Yeah. I mean, they're called the Devas, but one of them is a, a rat that could be sort of described as junkie, and the other is a hog <sighs> down the road. Yeah. You Am have I... been waiting for the last two hours, 15 minutes to make this joke. <laughs> yes, you? I have. That was terrible. Jeez. Are you satisfied? I was expecting something better. Winky face. Winky wait. face. Oh, wait, hold on. Can you walk Winky me through face. that joke? I don't think okay, I got basically, it. in Overwatch, there's two Australian dudes called John Crap and Oh, Rose. it's an Overwatch thing, okay. And uh, another one of the characters in Overwatch is called uh, Diva. Diva. And she does a winky face. Yeah, I'm, yes. I'm okay with not playing uh, Overwatch. I'm okay with it. Oh, it's so fun, though. No, okay. Oh, there's also one other Dave that we forgot about. Which the one? big driving force behind a lot of this stuff. Makuramon. The monkey. Uh, well, we'll, well yeah. I was, I was going to yeah. hold off let's, on that, because uh, Makuramon's a little more important. And he, um, he keeps pretending to be a let's human. Jump back to, uh, let, let's oh. jump back to the... Um, the sheep and the, 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 the bull, because those are where we get the other two Digivolutions. Yeah, Pajiramon yeah. and Vajramon. Yeah, and then we get Rapidmon and Talmon. Uh, there was a, like, there, well, there was a, a unique of, um, instance when Vajramon and Panjiramon came through because I guess since they, since it was two ultimates coming through at the t- same time, their data wasn't fully, fully formed, so they began eating electronics. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. That was an odd moment. And, like, yeah. they, 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 in, in the sub they say they're eating digital items, and I'm like, that's not how that works. <laughs> I mean, like with, with with a lot of these devas, there's a lot of stuff that's not all that important that goes on. Like the fights themselves aren't that important. It's like just like okay, well, let's get through this one. Uh, the important thing in the the episode with the the sheep and the and the what's it ox? Um, yeah, and the ox is that uh, this is the episode where Henry's dad finds out that Terriermon. Is, exists and is alive. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yep. And that's going to turn out to be really important because we'll Henry's that. dad is a hugely important character. Yes, he is. He is one of the creators. But yeah, we'll come back to that shortly. Yes. Um. Um. I think the other big <laughs> yeah, Vajramon for some reason has a boner for Renamon until she turns into a humanized shape for Talmon, and he's like, no, that's a wrong form. I can't fuck that! <laughs> God, this fucking season. It's a lot more sexual than I remember it being. Um, that's because that's not the season, that's just Chris and Andy and probably me. Yeah, that's just us. Yeah. <laughs> terrible people. I don't know why you're listening to this podcast. Yeah. If you're still listening at this point, which God bless you if you are, because this is a long one. They're probably um, so let's put, let's put it this way. They're probably fapping to this. No. no. Why? why? Maybe to I don't my, know. Maybe to I, I my don't sexy know voice. Why? But outside See, I don't of know that, whether no. to be appalled or to or whether to wiggle my eyebrows at them suggestively now. Both? <laughs> Appallingly wiggles eyebrows. <laughs> um. Okay. So let's get into uh, Impmon's last stand. Uh, the episode where uh, Impmon's like, "Fuck you! I'm gonna take on an ultimate on my own." And not just an ultimate, like the biggest fucking thing. Dude, and that's like, I'm gonna take on an ultimate. I'm gonna fight the cops. <laughs> I'm gonna just so much oh, what, what yes. Where he fights the cops. He did. Yes. He, he was in a stand The line I love so much. He's jumping around on, on the cars. And the police are pointing guns at him. I would like and to. And in the dub, I would like... the line that they use to cover up the fact that they're using actual guns is like, like don't move or we'll shoot. Well, sir, should we let, let him know that the guns aren't actually note-loaded? 
Oh, oh my god. I'm like, surprised they got an anorexia joke past the radar. I, like, I am shocked. I would, oh, what was that one that It was like when when Rika was when her mom was trying to get Re, uh, Rika to model and she's like, and don't ask weird questions like why do the models always look so hungry? Oh dear. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> Oh my god, that's terrible. <laughs> about the about the implant, oh no. about the implant jumping on the cut sequence, I would like to point one thing out. Implant is like implant is a rookie level. You we tend to think of them as kind of weak, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When More implant less, yeah. stomps on the cards, he dents the ropes like something fierce. Yeah, he does. It's well. I mean, car roofs aren't exactly meant. Are they? They're not designed to be jumped on. Yeah, but he yeah, doesn't look on. particularly heavy either. So there's there's a force of impact there. Oh, I mean, he's got those big ass feet. And That's true. when he takes yeah. on Indramon, who besi- besides who grows with, who grows quite a bunch between the first his first appearance and his second appearance. Because yeah, but he even, he's not even the biggest Deva, I yeah, think. But the point is, oh uh, no, um, Majirmon, the dragon, that one's the biggest. Well, that was the that was the other one I was going to yeah, say, but, probably the dragon. But, but which, well, I'm we talking like seen the dragon yeah, yet, in, like height Indramon, basically. When, when Indramon appears, he looks like I don't know, well, feet to me, and then when he reappears, he looks like thirty feet, and I'm like, when did? This well, he's standing on a overpass, so he's got quite a bit of elevation. Yeah, but, uh, I, I think that's just by bigger. comparison to other characters, but. The point is, when Impmon is trying to take on Indramon, you can the, the animators and the sound effects guys they made a point to 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 showcase how much of a physical impact there is from uh, from Impmon's attacks, even if Indramon is not damaged much. Meanwhile, in the dub, music-wise, I don't know that the soundtrack for that for that one particular episode was just all over the place. But yeah, I mean, like, obviously, Impmon isn't able to do much damage to, uh, to Indramon, and, he, and uh, uh, Indramon kicks his ass pretty easily. In fact, yeah, I would say Indramon that, uh, comes in with that horn, you know, you like that sound, it goes, shub it up it up it up it up and I, I'd say, I'd go as far as to, uh, I'd go as far as to say that Indramon is just horsing around with him for the most part. Um... You- yeah, you see, but you yeah, make a horse gets, joke. Yeah. I go the high road and make an earth, wind, and fire joke. That's where we're different. And I'm just sitting here shaking my head at both of you. And I would <laughs> like to remind you guys that, uh, okay, but not remind you, I would like to point out that uh, at the point where Imp1 was, uh, every time I watched that sequence, I got, I, I, I almost break down crying, because damn it. The guy was an asshole. Up Imp1 there. did not deserve so- this level of abuse. He did not. No. He was so fucking desperate that this. Yeah. He he tried so hard. And it didn't Don't. even matter. Don't. I, I I wasn't gonna. I was gonna let one of you pick it up if you wanted to. I didn't want to. I didn't. When live. you try your best, but you don't succeed. I hate Coldplay, so that might actually be worse for me. Especially, Please, especially... we'll take Lincoln Park over Coldplay. <laughs> How dare you! <laughs> but yes, uh, the point where, like, the, the scene at, uh, where, where Infone is just lying there and destabilizing, I, 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 uh, the first time I saw that, I, 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 was, I, I, I was feeling like, like that that sick feeling you get when when you're empathizing with a character who's, who's visibly wounded mm-hmm. you know you know what i'm going for right yeah yeah so, yeah i just felt bad because it's like i want to ditch evolve why can't i ditch evolve also uh let's note renamon being a huge fucking asshole here being like she's he's getting the snot kicked out of him and rika's like renamon go help him and she's like Wait, wait for it wait for it well, and I she waits she... for like the moment immediately before he would have gotten killed before saving him i think she, just, i think she just, just wanted to, to see I, I think she just wanted to see if he could do it uh i think she knew he would resent her a lot more if she like saved him before the like the end of the line 
That's yeah. true as well. Yeah, I was like, let's wait until he's near unconscious, and then we can save him and make him feel better about himself. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't feel better about himself for the most seri- most of the series anyway, so, yeah. So then, uh, Indramon just sort of fucks off to somewhere. Uh, but then, um... And Imran stays that's, that's beaten when, up for like the for like a good solid few episodes. Yeah, but what happens now is that uh, Henry the dad, monster Mr. makers Wong, are reunited. Yes, and uh, they get sort of recruited into Hypnos, and this is maybe where we get our first hint that maybe Hypnos isn't necessarily as bad as we think they are. I mean, Not evil. Um, they still, they're still yeah. Yamaki is still a jackass who leaves bad. I mean, it's like their intentions are good. It's just the way they go about it is kind of skeevy. Yeah, it it really is. Um, But yes, the Monster Makers are reunited. We get Curly, stereotypical black man, I forgot his name, Daisy, who has the resting smug face. I love her so much. There's just a constant smug expression on her face. We also got Larry. They're a, they're a pretty diverse crowd. Well, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. they're, they're like a and Shibumi act. who's fucking around in the country. Oh, Shibumi! But we'll get to that. Um, I but, really uh, don't know what yeah. I'm drinking. Whenever we say that, <laughs> <laughs> hope so. Yeah, yeah, actually. yeah. I mean, like, basically, uh, at this point, uh, Takato uses a fake blue card again and it turns into a real blue card which i mean i guess points for consistency even if it doesn't make much sense yeah um, plot and then like they just fuck up indramon pretty easily then we get to episode 21 <laughs> one of my favorite episodes <laughs> aka this 10 year old girl wants to fuck a lion the <laughs> animation <laughs> Oh dear, that's the part that one is perfect, especially when Takato is just uh, there at the phone calling both Rika and yes, the comic, the comic timing of that scene, fantastic. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's really like, Well, even the Japanese one, it's like, Jerry, have you ever been in love before? Yeah, when? Kindergarten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, whole, that whole bit was beautiful. It's like... <laughs> Hey, uh, Jerry, do you have a Digimon? Uh, are you sure he's your partner? Yeah. Uh, you have a Digimon? Yeah, yeah, she says she's uh, sure that he's her partner. It's like, oh, okay. Why? Um, because it's destiny, Kay. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she says it's destiny. It's and that co- whole, Takano's it's, just like, all right. It, it's Same shit so as well. always. It's hilarious. Oh, let, yeah. let's even bring up how Leomon shows up. Rainbow forms over this fountain, and he just emerges from it. Yeah. <laughs> it's such then, a beautiful scene. As in the Japanese version, the same music that played when Magnamon first digivolved plays for this scene. <laughs> and the lion just emerges from the rainbow. And she's like, and I love it because he's out there saying that he's there to fight opponents and load their data so he's basically there to murder and devour everybody. And Jerry's just giving him goo-goo eyes and being like, oh, Mr. Leoman, sweep me away in your big, strong arms. Oh, uh, plus... It just looks, plus, looks to Calamon. she okay? Translation it, note. It wasn't raining that day. Translation. But it was wet. Translation note. Uh, because... Uh, one of the one one of the funnier things I found in the no one really nobody nobody went for that no uh, for the okay. uh, for the German dub because in the Jap- the uh, in the original Japanese uh, Juri keeps calling Leomon Leomon Sama so basically Lord the yeah uh, yeah and he keeps yes, kept right. telling her to lay that off but you know German doesn't have anything comparable, so they just went and still had her calling him Prince Leomon. And it was oh God. the best! He's like, I'm not a prince! But yeah, this uh, this episode is the one where um, where Jerry wants him to fist her of the Beast King. <laughs> oh, sure, <laughs> God! <laughs> <laughs> this is also the episode where we get the most useless Deva. 
Yeah, also, I guess they fight a Deva in this episode. <laughs> I, Whatever, it's not important. Gets its, it gets its ass kicked by two championship Digimon with no modifications. Uh, and there's the Stalker then, monkey. Like, Makuramon. Oh, yeah, and the I monkey love, gets, shows up, too. I love Makuramon. And, like, we don't know that he's the monkey at this point. Oh, come on! We know he, Looking we know at him, if him, you though. didn't guess this by this... Guess it by this point, you didn't... You're not... I mean, like, yeah, it, it's it's pretty obvious, but he's just, like... A weird dude. Yeah, that face. Yeah, all it does for the first several episodes, he just stares at the kids and just goes... <laughs> and sometimes 180s his head. Oh, God. Oh, and sometimes we'll just angrily charge at them. But yeah, this episode does kind of end up taking a dark note at the end where yeah. Leomon's like, yeah, kid, I'm not your partner, and leaves are sort of crying and alone. Yeah, like, it, it was like, it's all fun and games until somebody gets their heart broken. Yeah. And again, yeah. as we said earlier, Davis had to fucking ruin it. Fucking Davis. Uh, <laughs> guess Jerry's not the only thing that's shaken. God damn it, Davis. Dude. Time and place, Davis. Time and place. Wasn't, even wasn't even this when a, he's not here. Wasn't this episode where he, where, with the scene where Jury uh, tries to use uh, Takato's Digivice to help Leomon? Or yeah. was that the next yeah. one? No, it was That's this one. one. Yeah, it's according this one with to the, the old card slashes. <laughs> I, uh, according to the uh, Wikipedia article that I have pulled up here, that I have been using to guide me through this discussion, um, it says uh, Jerry tries to use Digimon cards on him through Takano's Digi. I'm gonna stop doing this. Voice. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Fifty percent of our audience not just... just dropped out. <laughs> so, like two what, 90, people. How much? Fifty percent. So, like, two people... Is that 50% of what we had left, or was that the <laughs> remaining 50% that was listening at the beginning? Let's just go with both. <laughs> so, like, two people anyway. Yeah, anyway. Uh... Um, but I actually like this, how it's done in Japan, in Japan, because since it has the uh, fight song that's played... It's always like dan 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 Every time the failed card slash happens with poor Jerry. So do we want to move on to uh, the Boar Wars, as the episode is titled in English? Yeah, we should. Oh, there's one thing I want to comment on the dub. What's that? Um... Uh, I bitched a lot in uh, Zero Two about how there was never a moment for a breathing room there because it was just constant, constant dialogue. Yep, I remember. They eased up on it for this season. Yes, they did. Significantly I thank so. them for that. Significantly so. <laughs> yeah, again, I think... not as many quieter moments as there are in the original, but it definitely eased up, especially on the shitty jokes. Yes. You know, to be completely honest, I do sort of appreciate all the uh, all the stuff that they added in because I was actually like I had this on one of my monitors at work as I was watching it, so I couldn't like glue my eyes to the screen exactly. So I, I kind of liked how they overexplained everything that was going on. It made it a much quicker watch. Yeah. Uh. So um. Yeah, this is where uh, Mama Swine shows up to. <laughs> Jesus, actually, no, it's not pi like Pile of Swine. Yeah, Pile of Swine. Also, Mama Swine, Mama Swine wasn't created yet. No, it yeah. wasn't. So I just, I just shot your joke down twofold. Well, Pokemon Go wasn't created when when Digimon Tamers <laughs> came out, so that joke doesn't. Does that joke not hold up, Tom? It's, a, um, it's okay, Andy. It's okay. I think we just, just, anyway. I think we established that Pokemon Go ripped off that one episode. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Boar pretty much demolishes everything. Oh, he yeah. fucks up Tokyo. Yeah. And like at this like of point, all the things that have fucked up Tokyo, it's just like oh, it's a pig this time. God damn it! Pretty much. The the cat's out of the bag in terms of yeah. Like Hypno the, um, well, Hypnos basically goes down for this. 
Yeah, uh, they try yeah. to activate Juggernaut again. They almost succeed until Makuramon fucks things up. Yeah. Fucking Makuramon. And, okay, so I need to establish this. In Japan, the the, the part two of the whole uh, the Karlamon fight, yeah. that episode aired December 1st, 2001. Okay. December. Dece- oh no! Wait, no. Um, wait. December because was it really? Let me let me look at the list. No, Hold no, no, no. Because no, two thousand one, two thousand two is zero two. So it would have been two thousand two, two thousand three, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just remember that I was in seventh grade. No, two thousand two wasn't. Uh, zero two didn't come out in two thousand two. No, it, it came out before no, two thousand. No, two thousand one to two thousand two was zero two. Like that, 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 oh, that, okay. that broadcast. No, okay. Season. The actual Wikipedia has their has their dates fucked up. I gotta look at the Digimon one. Hold on. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. No. Like because I, I remember this episode airing in Japan shortly after. What? It could not have been two days before because people were losing their minds over this. What was it? Exactly? I remember in Japan when Hypnos blew up. It looked. A lot like the World Trade Center going up. Oh Jesus! No, this would have been a year after that. That no, this was two thousand one. Ch- Tamers was, was two thousand one. Really? God, what? Yeah, but I was. I would have been six. Dub, grade then. you, you, you. I remind you, you watched the dub. Yeah, the, the dub that also out? aired in two thousand one. No, that couldn't have been. Some these Wikipedia. No, I it's no. All right. Okay. Fifth grade, I was zero one. Sixth grade was zero two. Seventh grade was zero three. That's how I remember it. I mean, no, I definitely know Tamers was two thousand one. Let's uh, let's the, put a pin in this. And yeah, then, like do I some research and come back to it. Everyone was like, because Hypnos blew up, explosion out of the side of the building. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. And, I, I don't remember an outcry to that, but. No, it wasn't an outcry. But I know anyone following the Japanese one at that time was just like, oh. No, <laughs> and that obviously got edited out of the American version. I mean, yeah. that's an actual building. That that the, the, the that's an actual building that exists in Tokyo. Yeah, yes, and it's, it's, but still, it, again, it looked way too similar. It keeps getting used yeah, for shadowy we were, organizations in anime. We were very, we were very uh, sensitive about that time for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um... So I know Vakar- so, Vakaramon, yeah. uh, however you pronounce it, is like the coolest name for a David ever. Would you say that he lives Vakaris? God damn it. I didn't think the joke was coming until you started <laughs> saying it. And I'm like, oh no. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the cat's pretty much out of the bag on, the, on Digimon at this point. Yeah, like, more or less. In terms of the population as a whole yeah yeah once you get a city kind of sort of level that yeah what's a giant pig sweeps through your downtown area it's pretty much emitting emitting a stream of of particle effects yeah so um they beat the pig at some point yeah um yeah they did which they do via yelling yeah Yeah. (laughs) anime screaming makes you stronger Yep, that's usually how it goes. But then uh, the plot kicks out when uh, Vikaramon is the monkey, right? Uh, Vikuramon. Vikuramon. V- Vikuramon, yeah. Vikuramon is uh, the monkey. He uh, he grabs uh, Kalamon and goes back to the digital world. Uh, yep. Leomon tries to stop him, fails. And in the process... Uh, Jerry becomes a tamer. Yeah, Shushamon fucks him up. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, and then the, the Jerry becomes a full tamer. Yep. Yay! Now her dreams to fuck a lion can come true. And yeah. Well, I mean, it may not be her, but that lion's getting fucked by the end of the series. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What is wrong with us today? <laughs> Too many things. Yeah. So, let's, uh, this is sort of what ends this uh, this first sort of arc, or well, is that I f- guess two arcs if you yeah. want to count the the Deva arc as what? We we can say 
what like what conclusions they did because after Kalamon gets kidnapped by Makuramon, they decide to follow uh, into the digital world and make preparation. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was right. I was that, leading yeah, into no, that. that. Like this is this is the last episode of sort of the the first half of the show, sort of the the first arc. The, the arcs kind of blend together because we're in like the middle of the Deva arc right now. Right. Yeah. But it's. Yeah, well, no, um, once once um, we enter the digital world, we're roughly at the halfway point. Yeah, so this is, Quite literally uh, this is at the, the last episode point, that we're going to be. Yeah, uh, this is the episode that we're going to be finishing with. I lo- I love this um, episode. I love this episode just because it shows like it's them a saying goodbye to their families and also letting them know, hey, this is what's been going on. Well, well their families are them. way too <laughs> understanding. Like, yeah, Takato's death is just like. You know what? Okay. Well, this also kind of ties in with that theory I have, but that's for another time. Um, well, okay. Let let let's face it. Uh, some of them were left in the dark. Jerry's dad, Rika's mom, yeah, Kenta's parents. <laughs> yeah. Well, they at least address uh, Rika's mom. Like she's like. Uh, I don't think that she'll understand. I don't want to tell her. And like she, she tells her grandma. And uh, Rika's like, grandma is the best. Rika's yeah. grandma is awesome. Yeah, best grandma ever. She best kind of. Ever. She also kind of looks like an aged uh, version of Takato. TK's mom. Ta- Takato's mom. Oh, I, I got a TK mom vibe. From well, yeah, t- yeah. Uh, Takato's. Sorry, TK's. Yeah. Hmm. That also has okay. Anyway, sorry, uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. She's she she's pretty young looking for a grandmother. Yeah, I think it was implied that I I feel like it was implied that she had uh, Brigitte's mom had her at a young age. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can pretty much tell. I'm pretty sure that I mean, Rika's like, mom had Rika at a very young age. Yeah, I think that's what we were saying. Yeah. Oh, I I but, thought that Chris meant that. Uh, Rika's grandma had Rika's mom at a very young age. Well, that might have been the case yeah, too. Maybe both. Uh, I mean, either way, she's she she's you know in pretty good shape. She's she's a little bit of a gilf. Oh dear God! No. You call me shit, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> How far can we push the envelope on Dude, this podcast? Dude, we've already torn the envelope I, I, in half. I, I, I know how far... I know the point where you won't push the envelope, Andy. Dude, you, we we broke the envelope when you want to run him on a set on your face, okay? Uh, like, we're way past I, I, this whoa, point. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, whoa, he wasn't whoa, whoa, whoa. No, step on him. Him. He said step on his face. Oh, excuse me. I said me. step on me just a little bit. <laughs> Also, the point where Andy is will not go is furry Yuri Lolicon. That's been established. That's where I draw <laughs> the line. I mean, like, furry I get, Lolicon I get, Yuri I get, but the three of those combined? I mean, maybe if it was Loli furry, no. No, no, yeah. no, okay. no, no, okay. no, 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 I draw the line no. there. Back to the episode. Yeah. Um, and it turns out the entrance to the digital was right under the nose the entire time. And, uh, yeah, but there, there's a scene where uh, the teacher's like, Takato, you weren't paying attention again, were you? And he's like, um, Miles away. I guess not. And Jerry is like, hey, guess what? I wasn't paying attention together. And, uh, or yeah. as, as well, and Kazu and Kenta stand up and they're like, yes, we are also Spartacus. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that. <laughs> So they all go stand in the hall, and she's like, well, you're going to write me an apology note. And they write, hey, see ya, Teach. We're fucking off to the g- digital world now. Oh, yeah, we're going to a different world. We'll probably won't be coming back. <laughs> they, have no, I, they have no plan on how to come back. It sounds it sounds a little bit like a cult note and a little bit like a suicide note. Yeah, pretty much. And yeah. she runs out and she's like, "Guys, w- w- what the hell?" And uh, they're like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, no, we're talking about real, literal Digimon." She's like, "Oh, okay, that doesn't make it fucking better." Think of it yeah. how it will look on my. 
<laughs> that's a mix up. In the dub, she's a lot more concerned for them. Yeah. I think she, I think, like, she, but I think I think she, she also feels responsible, like, though. Yeah, I think she says something about how she's failed as a teacher or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, because she's like, shit, you guys can't even get complete PE class without hurting yourselves. And it's. I mean, she's not wrong. And uh, then, like, before they go, Yamaki shows up and he's like, here, I'm going to help you. And he becomes a good guy by taking off his sunglasses. Yep. And he gives uh, him, like, a. Some kind of. What, what the fuck did he give him? Com you? device. It was a com device. Com device. Yeah. But no, like also, the way this... they, they they frame that they frame that so blatantly. They play like good guy heroic music as he takes off his glasses and smiles at them. And we're like, oh, so this guy who's been an angry whiny douchebag the entire series, I guess he's a good guy now. Well, it's I'm also, fully well, on board with this. Well, since we're now at the halfway point, it's kind of good to show that you know that that first villain is now just kind of all right. We've reached an understanding. Yeah, we should also note that in the aftermath of Hypnos blowing up, uh, Yamaki has apparently gone through ten cigarette cartons in one day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he needs help. He needs serious help. Well, I mean, he does seem a little more relaxed when he's talking to the kids. I, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't say, yeah, I had a long session with my dominatrix last night. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I think he Did has. We can't guys, escape it. Andy, Andy, I think that Yamaki has enough common sense not to talk about his sex life with fucking ten-year-olds. We hope so. Probably. Yeah, also, I, I should note that you can see on his computer he has a disturbing amount of details regarding these kids and their Digimon. Yeah. I mean, Shadowy government organization, remember? Yeah. Also, the fact that they know, at least Yamaki knows where, T where Takato lives. Jesus Christ. Uh, and then there's, uh, like, uh, they, they add, oh yeah, earlier in the series, Takato, Takato had made a Tamer's flag for them. Yeah, oh, I was um, about to bring up the flag! Oh, that and then flag! Added, uh, yeah, they added uh, Jerry and Liamon. And then uh, Kazu and Kenta there just at the bottom sort of smushed together. Yeah. Probably because uh, because Kenta and Kazu are each other's partners. Yeah, pretty much. Because, they're, be, because they are in a loving relationship. That is the implication. Jesus. Um... But yeah, then they, they just sort of head to the digital world, including Kaza and Kenta, because they're like, well, we want Digimon it, we don't have Digimon. Yeah, we're going to be completely and utterly defensive in, de defenseless in there, but whatever, we're going to. Um, and I guess that's where the episode ends. Yep. And then the real adventure begins. All this was just kind of build yep. up to this, more or less. Yeah, it was so. mostly, actually, like, the first half of, of Tamers is largely character moments. Yeah, yeah. It's, a lot of, uh, it's a lot of character development. Um, but it's all they subtle retread ground a, Yeah, they retread a lot of the same ground, but I think it's <clears throat> ground that needs to be retread to show that this is not just some magical thing that someone is completely over immediately like the things that they deal with and struggle with yeah no it's, it's stuff that keeps coming back mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, i think that they're you know it was a little bit slow but it's uh pretty pr pretty decent um after it's, zero it's a lot better than i thought of at the time after zero two i'm kind yeah. of surprised how mellow the, all the characters were about the digimon murdering and eating their opponents though yeah, a little because bit. Because Zero um, Two kept making the point of we're not killing, we don't want to kill anyone. Yeah, well, that was fucking shoehorned in obnoxiously, though. Yeah. Uh, like, Henry's struggles with pacifism are much better and much more realistic, I think. And I think that it was good to especially have just in the one Musimon character episode. do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And, like, especially Which we where, neglected to bring up. You know, you've got him as a, as a foil to, uh, to Rika, who is just like, you know, 
well, whatever, I don't care about these Digimon at all, they exist to fight, whereas Henry's like, no, this is something that's wrong, this is... We should not be fighting at all. It's like the yeah. two complete opposite sides. And it's, then a, Takata... it's a lot more mature in that sense. Yeah. And then Takata's in the middle, who's like, he understands that, you know, Digimon are people, but you know, or Digimon are like living, breathing creatures, but you gotta fight when it's necessary. Also, Takata is lovely, mm-hmm. how do I tame it? One thing I wanted, uh, one thing I wanted to like mention uh, before before we end because I I kind of forgot to mention it when we were talking about the evolution sequences because again yeah. when we get to the ultimates and then later the megas uh, we get CGI sequences for the two main male characters and I was right. and I was like why the hell did you, I I mean I kind of get got that in the Adventure and Zero Two where like there wasn't a lot going for the uh, uh, evolution sequences, generally, animation-wise. But they, they had gorgeous 2D animation for the evolutions. They really c- could have made the ultimate and mega levels for all of them drone animation and not lose anything. In fact, it would have been superior and probably cheaper at the time. Well... Uh, I think that it was mostly just a, hey, CGI is new and exciting thing. Uh. But, I mean, that's that, that's how it is with all the, the thing, And it was tradition yeah. at the time. So, I mean... Uh, I mean, now, obviously, we can look back at on it and say, wow, that CGI looks really dated and bad. I, I, but... No, I don't even mean it in that way. I just, I, it's, it was a thing that I kind of, like, when I first watched, I was like, you don't have that large of a cast, so there's no point in making these two stand out from the three. Yeah, Riga, they... they uh, yeah, I guess that's... But a, at the same time, she has the... Taomon and uh, Sakuyamon had the two more gorgeous evolution sequences. Oh, holy shit, yes. But that's kind yeah, of my sure. point. They could have had really impressive drone animation, and I, I was actually thinking it at the time. I was like, there was no point. This would have looked better hand-drawn. Guys, why? Mm-hmm. Because reasons. So I guess subtle sexism and leaving Rika out of the CGI thing ultimately uh, came around full circle and left her with the best animation sequence for yeah, yeah, kind of did, yeah. So some good things come out of sexism sometimes. Strike that from the record. Um, yeah, I don't want to be quoted as saying that. So you better edit it out. <laughs> yeah. Please edit it out. That was cringe. Okay. That was cringeworthy. I cringed. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um. So that's the first half of Tamers. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, we're in we're in for a ride uh, after this. This is oh, the goodness, yeah. Because I mean, again, to to make Evangelion comparisons, because uh, there are a lot of Evangelion comparisons you can make. Uh, second half of the show really starts to go off the rails and get kind of weird and fucked up. But the, but not due to lack of budget, just because that's just where the story took it. Yeah, that's where the story took that's it. That's what um, Chiaki took it. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get into digital experiments, Jerry, pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get a big discussion with Jerry. So, uh, yeah, we haven't touched too much on Jerry apart from her wanting to to get with that uh, that sexy beast king man, which I mean. Let's let's be fair. I mean, we haven't oh God, touched, here we go. Look we at him. We I mean, haven't touched a lot on Jerry, but we're pretty sure she wants to get touched on by a Leomon. <laughs> and indeed, she does. And that was terrible of me. I will now go wash my mouth out with soap. Do it, bitch. Well, uh, we're gonna get into Rio next time. Fucking Rio. Rio. Fucking Rio. Uh, we're gonna get into um. The uh, what's the name of that that program? Are we going to get D-Reaper? that far? That's a good question. D Reaper. D Reaper. We'll yeah. S- well, we'll see when we record it. Yeah. And um, Beelzemon. I think we'll get to Beelzemon yeah. next time, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, so. Beelzemon. Uh, but we also, I mean, it depends on when the try comes out. How quick we get that recorded. 
Yeah, it does. And how quickly I get this edited. Hopefully it'll be quicker, but... Yeah, hope for fucking And how late. quickly you can finish Kano Flag. Yeah. Like, I mean, Jesus is, Christ. Uh, I put a lot of effort into the last podcast I edited, and I got that one done in like a week, so... Well, okay then. Hopefully I'll be able to, to do this one, because... Anyway. Yeah, we all... Um, all right. This is it? Let's, uh, yeah, I think this is, uh, this is it. We'll see you next time for when we cover either the second half or the third quarter of, uh... We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes, yeah. And maybe um, I'll get to my theory next time. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe. Maybe we'll get to Tom's theory. Maybe next time we'll be try. Who knows? Maybe. We'll see. So... Who knows, um, we could just go skip full over and start with Digimon Digimon Cross Wars and then come back to Tamers and then jump to Savers and then go to Data School and right then go to Frontier to and then jump Cross to the Savers War. movies and then for some reason cover Atmon even though it might not be finished and then jump back to... Uh, oh my god, uh, shut up, shut up. <laughs> you oh, took that Chris. way too far. <laughs> why did you, why did you mention Christ. Cross Wars? Why well, did taking you things have way to too far Cross seems Wars. to be the theme of this podcast. Yes. Yeah, well, this that should be the title of this podcast. We take things too far. All right. So, um, I guess that's all we've got for now. Until next time, I'm Buggy. I'm Tom. I'm Mad. I am Chris, and I will adamantly defend Edg Edgemon's lack of edginess. <laughs> you are twelve. All right. And uh, we will be back. We will see you next time. With Metal Greymon's hair. <laughs> Later, kids. Bye.